Check. Toast. 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 Hello, everyone, and welcome to the flagship show of the Boulevard Bullies YouTube channel. Welcome to the flagship show of the entire internet wrestling community, as voted on by nobody. Welcome to Here Comes the Lame Wrestling Podcast. I am PK with the Boulevard Bullies, and I think I hear, I think I hear a stirring. I think I hear a stirring happening. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, freshly out of um, the Maestro Classics Barbershop backstage at WWE. Ladies mm -hmm. and gentlemen, the flagship Joe, Jedi Joe. Hello, Joe. What up? Welcome in, everybody. Yes, fresh cut. Bald, baldy fade. I'll do the baldy fade here. And then blend it into here, and I want to keep growing this, so don't take much off there, but take more off the top, please. An hour and a half later. Wow. Does he give you a little massage? Does he put the thing on it? No. Mm. I had my eyebrows done today. Oh. Wow. I'm always, I'm always scared to do. But did you get them, like, t plucked, or does he just mm -hmm. go... Dzz, dzz? Yeah, he just puts the comb and goes like... Ram, ram, yep, that's, ram, ram. that's what it does for me. So... But yeah, um, an hour and a half haircut. He takes his time with it. Probably the best barber I've ever had. Wow, I mean, I'm... and that's big, big in Philly because, like, you know, like New York, there's a lot of great barbers and shit. So, well, I don't know any of them. I'm not muted, am I? Oh fuck, no, I'm just kidding. But it was, it was good. <laughs> just... It was good that you were away because um, my microphone wasn't properly set up, so I said hello and was getting no sound and had to. Touch the switch, quickly deduce the problem, reconnect. But you don't know that. You were away. My drink is the exact same color of your shirt. Yeah. So cheers. Caution to you. caution orange, yeah. Uh have you watched X Men ninety seven? Uh I have not yet. I meant to do that today. Um, but yeah, it, it didn't happen today, unfortunately. Sorry. Um, I'm probably gonna do it after this. Apparently, did you hear that uh People are upset because, of course, first, first they turned the frogs gay, and now apparently they've turned Gambit gay. Apparently, he was wearing a, he was hanging around uh, the, you know, the university uh, with a pink crop top, and everyone's like, oh, of course, of course. He was all, oh no, he wasn't French. He was from uh, uh, New Orleans. He's like a swamp. He's like a swamp guy. Yeah, he's from the Bayou. The tides, the tides. Screw the damn tides. You remember that episode from no. from the old show? He, like they go, the X Men. Like Gambit gets a um, a letter um, to, uh, to go help his brother or something like that back home. So they go there, and something about the tides is like some backwater Louisiana like sort of ritual or or their. It's like their kind of their Bible or their religion or whatever. And he's like, screw the damn tides. It's like a. It's like a rite of passage or something nice it's kind of a lame episode well then i saw somebody rebut screaming into the camera all the reasons why gambit's always been gay it's like oh his power is to turn things hot pink and make them explode yeah he was exactly. wearing, wears fingerless gloves and no <laughs> yoga pants <laughs> yeah he's got a I'm girlfriend here. that he can't touch unless or, or he'll die yeah, yeah, it's like cut. He's cut. He's a cuck. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah. Apparently, Ga apparently, from a very young age, Gambit was always built to make us want to kiss him on the mouth. Did you know the the other meme of Rogue where she's like lying down in the episode oh, of Apocalypse? They flattened her butt. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no. Wait, that scene is in. Oh no, uh, there was another. What is there another scene of her butt or like just her from behind? Well, app apparently they made her much less curvaceous. Yeah, yeah, it was very curvaceous. Yeah, so who knows? You know, they're 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 taking away our freedom. Yeah, yeah. Oh well. Uh, I like my gambit straight, my rogue with a big butt. Yes. And I Ray like Harris. my M and M green M and M slutty. <laughs> oh wait, they nerfed her too, right? They put sneakers on my slutty M and M. Oh, she used to have like um, like white. High knee high boots, right? Yeah, she no, she or was it knee high boots, or she maybe she wore heels. Yeah, but she had, she had horseshoes, and now that. 
horseshoes. And it's, and so it's like we we're taking Rogue's butt and like you know magic eraser. Yeah. But yet, women's wrestling more butt more butts than ever. You know. Oh yeah. So I uh, you know the I don't literal know. we're pretty much at the striptease level, <laughs> stripper level, men's gentlemen's club. Love it. Live for it. Long what live X Men. Uh, nothing. I played. I was playing my Warhammer, and uh, you know, as an avid Resident Evil fan, I'm sure you saw the other day when uh, uh, on Twitch somebody redeemed pick the game points, and I had to play Resident Evil Two. Uh, and I was already in the bag after Tuesday's show. So, uh, how would you rate me as a Resident Evil player? You're a seasoned vet. <clears throat> I mean, like you're like a three or four <laughs> out of That's five bad. stars out of five. five. I oh, know, out of 10. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. It was pretty bad. It was just, like, going super slow. And then, like, Jomo's just, like, backseating the whole time. Yeah, because... It's just, I... like, a wall of text. Like, it's like a game fax walkthrough, <laughs> just, like, put make into a left. the Twitch chat. <laughs> yeah, make left. Down the hall. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, it was fun. You know. Are you not going to finish that playthrough? Oh, no. Probably, no. probably not. Probably not. What a waste of points. Well, that's what you get. You can just get a few hours. Yeah, you get like three hours tops. <laughs> I have the same redemption on my Twitch stream now, and I make sure I put it in there. And I'm like, you get to redeem the game, and I play it in its entirety. Wow. Wow. So so, so I suck. So I got to I gotta revisit some of my some of my policies. Uh. Because if if it's play the game in its entirety – I don't think I could leave that up to the point, the the decision makers. Of well, you point. would discuss terms. You 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 still. It's like it's kind of like card subject to change, or like, uh, uh, uh you know, you have to approve it. Okay. You're like, okay. can I can That's I beat uh, Top Gun on NES? Like, ah, probably not. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna play it for like X amount of hours. <laughs> I'll play for like three different streams. I'll play it for one week. I'll play for two weeks. And if we don't really get anywhere, then we're going to have to, like, modify how we play it. Like, are we going to play with cheats or infinite lives or. Wow. So that's, you know that's why you're the flagship, Joe, because you're you're tough, but you're fair. Yeah, I'm hard, but I'm fair. <laughs> <laughs> what if uh, somebody just redeems like. Points and says, like, uh, play, like play something that you hate, like uh, what's that? That's that Disney game. It's that anime Disney game. Like, what if someone's like Kingdom Hearts? Yeah, yeah, Kingdom or Hearts. Something like that you just like could not stomach. Like, would well, you just? Ki- deny? I love Kingdom Hearts one okay. and two. That's I'm fine by that. I never played the third one, so I would love for someone to redeem the third one, and then I would just be like thoroughly confused because on Kingdom Hearts has all Final Fantasy characters. Right, that's true. I guess that <laughs> like, was, that's a, bad, awesome that was a bad example. Yeah, you can play. You can have Cloud on your team. You can fight Sephiroth. You know, you can fight. You have Squall on your team. You know, you gotta have all the classic characters and classic Disney characters at the same time. Who? What more could you possibly want? What more would you possibly want than a made-up new character, Cloud Strife, and Goofy on your part? It's Make a dream it team. Not, not Japanese enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, how's your streaming been doing? Have your numbers bumped up since your beautiful haircut? We're we're losing we're losing subscribers by the day, followers by the day, viewers hemorrhaging, by the day. Hemorrhaging engagement. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh I got like a good amount of subs on YouTube. I was like, eh, I think I can like manage streaming, like restreaming on both. It's just like I'm about to like just not stream on YouTube anymore. It's no point. Minus two hundred from last month. My, my like red arrow down minus 200 took me a while to get those subs i mean i wasn't even creating content so i guess they weren't like made genuinely i don't know whatever but it's no one's on youtube but plenty of people like urka logan stein were then there yesterday yesterday yeah oh yeah and uh yeah so Everybody it's fine we're just uh... messing with the retro achievement stuff in silent hill right now so. oh that's what yeah that's what you were going to uh that's what you were gonna do how's that going it's going, it's going fun. I mean, it's, you know, they put, like I told you last week, it's just like old achievements added to old games and stuff. New achievements added to old games. So what are some of the achievements like? Is it like 500 headshots type of thing? Things like yeah, that? Yeah, but like in Silent Hill, it's a little, you know, pretty janky. So it's like kill, get 100 kill melee kills. With the kills. pipe. With the pipe. Or <laughs> yeah, melee kill, pipe is a melee kill. But yeah, 
So it's like you get 30 kills, and then it's like get 60, get 90, get 120, get 200, you know. And then it's like get all the endings. So you have to play it at least five times. I, you know, I just now. Or five hit, different playthroughs, rather. Hit me like a ton of bricks. For the first time in my life, I'm realizing that I'm a, I'm a bad gamer. I'm not, I'm not good at video games. But we were aware of that. Oh, okay. You guys all knew. Who I yeah, didn't yeah. should tell me. Yeah, I, uh, I you did know, tell you like four <laughs> years ago. <laughs> I, never, uh, I never complete the game. Like I, yeah. like, I like game ADD. Yeah, but that's like every gamer these days. Like they never complete the games. Yeah. Like they'll always be like, oh, I'm playing Hill Divers, brother. And then it's just like, because you can see what people play. Not a lot of people take that little setting off where you can't see what they're playing. I took it off on mine because I didn't want to see people what I'm doing. But like where you can't see what they're playing on Steam and where you can't see what they're playing on Discord, most people don't. So I can see what they're playing and it's like, you know. Well, I think playing now it's game. like we're conditioned for the endless game. The seasons, you know, it's like seasons or like, oh, this is the new the new hotness. And then people start playing it. And then it's like, eh, I don't want to play it anymore. Eh, my friends aren't playing it. Or it's like a lot of peer pressure, you know, the social aspect, like, oh, oh we're all getting together and we're all playing this again. And it's like and then everyone leaves or the like I said, there's a season. They patch something. They nerf something. And it's like, oh, it's not the same anymore. Yeah. Like Diablo, you know, and then everyone just bails. And it's like oh, dead game. Paid seventy bucks for like two, three months, four months, and dead game. Yeah, I should, I should focus on beating games. I mean, like I have like so many games that I never even probably got to the third act of. Well, a lot of people. That's a question now they ask. Like, did you beat it? Back in the day, we always beat games, right? Because that's just how it was. Now it's like, did you actually finish it? You know, like that's a that's a that's an, that's an accomplishment. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I'm really gonna have to take a long look at myself in the mirror, uh, and and you're done. You're done with uh, Final Fantasy. It's over. I returned the the thousand uh, dollar monitor today. Really? Yes. Like, Here well, you I go. had to go back eventually. It's got Here a, you go. It, Boom. It's got on the, the clouds on hair the UPS burned desk. into yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's got like yeah. It's like Barrett and like the characters are just like burned into the screen. <laughs> It's like you left it on like the the ti- like this the title overnight. Yeah. It's like got um No, I, I I could just play it on my through the capture card on the PC. Cuz if I'm going to play it it's probably going to be on stream at some point, you know. So I could just I I couldn't I couldn't figure out how to work the splitter properly and shit. So So yeah, I just said screw it. Good, good for you. I, I didn't need a 6 700 dollar monitor. Yeah. Plus the thing was too big. Like if my monitor is like this, this thing was like this this big. It's too big. Here you go. Like, I'm trying to do work or look at things. I got to look all the way up here at the URL, like, to fucking to enter it. Like, <laughs> it was hurting your neck. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's why I've been kind of hurting lately. <laughs> like, last few weeks, I had, like, shoulder issues. It's probably for that I damn monitor. Because I'm, like, looking up at how big the monitor is. It's uh, ridiculous. I have a friend who streams. Riddance. And his setup must be, like, desk, like, like stream, like, computer. And then, like, gaming monitor, like, uh, on the wall. So when he streams, he's like, like that. It's like, oh, my God. Wait, who, that's me? No, no. I have a friend who streams. And it, I knew someone that did that. The TV was, like, up here. And it was like. And it's oh, like, to oh. look at chat or something? No, like, the, the chat's down here. Oh, and then the TV <laughs> yeah, the other way the around. Game, so it's like he's playing the game. And it's like, yeah, it just looks odd. Yeah, and then you don't want the primary monitor to be, like. The one you're exerting, you know, <laughs> right. I, yo, it's really funny. You mentioned that when I first started streaming on Twitch, like we're talking 20, like four years, years ago. ago, 24 like, years ago. It's, I, actually, I think I started streaming this week, four years ago. Wow. How I think about it. You were so, or a little, you were so nah, maybe a little early. It was like this month before years ago. Cause so COVID young started. and full of hope. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so what happened was, I think the setup was, if you look at like the old clips of the channel, it was like, I used, I had, I had, it, it was just the computer. I didn't have the two monitor set up. I had, I was going off the console and the capture card. So I was probably playing like Resident Evil or something like that on uh-huh. my big TV this way. And then I would turn all the way this way to read chat. Nice. So what happened was one day I streamed for like three hours and I was doing <laughs> this the whole time. Right. Uh. And then I woke up the next day and I was like, 
<laughs> I couldn't. It was the most sore any muscle ever was in any sort of like, besides maybe like pulling like my lower back, like it was the most sore from any workout or anything ever. <laughs> So I had to like not stream for a little bit and just lay down and nice. ice it. Like it was messed Giving up. health updates in the Discord. Yeah. We'll be back soon, brother. Uh we have we have to talk sports as well. Of course. Did you hear that this guy Shohei Otani? Apparently, there's some shit with like his interpreter where like <laughs> he like he was like wiring money to his interpreter. But then the interpreter got fought. Like, then it turned out that, like, oh, all of a sudden the story changed, like, two or three times. And, like, the $4.5 million that, like, the interpreter had the the account number for, the, the bank account, like, no, he stole that. So now he's fired. Bad, bad guy. You, you, you were placing the bets, not me. You were betting on things. And so, fall guy. Yeah. yeah, basically, all signs point to Shohei Otani loving gambling, absolutely loving um, gambling. And I did, I did see a little bit of this. I don't know exactly what the story was, but uh, I did see the title of that, and then I saw a picture of um, was it y- Yamamoto? Right. And he had there was a picture of him with a glove, and it was like all black room, but there was a light coming from the glove, and it was like predict. Yamamoto's first stat line for his first start. <laughs> and someone said, he's got a betting app open in his glove. Right. He's, he's It was like a bright screen, it looked like. He's, and he's putting like, his uh, ERA to f- yeah. starting five runs given up in the first, plus, yeah. plus man, 8, that's 000. fucked up. That's fucked up, man. Yo, I mean. This is why you can't trust. This is why I don't fuck with sports like that anymore. I was saying it the other day. Everything's all fake now. Yo, they should all, they should not be allowed to gamble at all. If you're a professional athlete, across the board, you shouldn't be able to gamble. Like, you shouldn't, you don't let a fan see you at some blackjack table even. Like, I don't want any gambling from professional athletes. Because it's a slippery slope. You hear Bruno Mars, I was like, MGA Grand, like, 50 million dollars or something how do you stop them from betting though yeah well and they they just like don't bet well oh my god did you see no don't go to ben gm you can go to harris but you (laughs) did you see uh you know calvin ridley the football player who uh was suspended for two years for like betting on football yeah uh, yeah, or he was so so he was on jags last year on a one-year deal and jags offered him more money but he went to the patriots and the line for him to go to the Patriots was like plus twelve hundred, but the line oh. for him to go to the Jaguars was like plus four hundred, and they offered him like substantially more money. But he went to the Patriots. Yep. You know, I don't know, dude. Got him. But apparently, Otani. Uh, oh my God! And Twitter was having a field day too, where it's like, it's like uh, Otani. Like they had, they showed the the meme of like the the Forty Niners players getting the the chiefs confetti on them and it's like yeah. when Ot- when the dodgers win the world series in four games but otani bet them to win it in six <laughs> <You know>? like, <laughs> damn it <laughs> yeah and it's like all stuff about him being upset that his bets aren't going through yeah yeah so no never i mean people forget who knows Once he yeah. starts playing yeah and i'm sure that you know if you think about it like on that level it's in the mlb's best interest that their global superstar isn't yeah. like taken down so i'm sure it's, like, that it's their next is. like barry bonds or whatever you know like or next their next superstar more like that's where we're Pete going Rose. it's like the japanese guys are really taking over you know yeah it's, it's not like ichiro side. and 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 uh uh matsui like these guys are bigger than that yo matsui shout out hideki matsui few good Godzilla. movies coming out um there are Godzilla. two horror movies that i want to see there's one with uh sydney sweeney as a sexy nun uh so i can't wait to watch that as i gotta as... purge my uh, algorithm all i see is her on my shit like i think i looked at said something like i buried her one day in a comment and then now it's like all over my algorithm so i gotta get rid of that um and then there's another one Talentless. where it's like there's like it's like a 70s TV show with all like 70s colors and like furniture and stuff. And they do, I guess, a live exorcism on the show. That's the movie. So it's like a 70s like Maury. And Everything's like, exorcism now. Yo, let's go. Emily Rose. I will watch exorcist any too. movie that has a, a demon possessing someone. I will watch any movie. 
uh, that has exorcisms. In it. So two, well, one exorcist movie and one religious movie with Sidney S- Sweeney. Um, so I- I'm into that. I- I'm all in on these horror movies. She's March. probably taking the best roles for her career. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that she's going to be LOL. very wet and in a nun outfit at some point in the movie. That's how now, now Hollywood is just going to be like girls like her, you know, like just it's going to be just like only fans, you know. Hey, she's a she's an accomplished actress. She was in she Infinity done? Pool. She was in she was the sexy Sydney Sweeney in that show about sexy teenagers, uh, Euphoria. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, and a bunch of she was she was a uh, superhero Marvel thing, Mar- Madame Web, Marvel Web. Yeah, she was Spider Woman. Yeah, and she was uh, in in her Spider Woman suit. She, I don't know if this is a true quote, but somebody was like, "Why'd you take that role?" To like, well, I didn't write the movie. I don't care how it came out. I just took the role. Nice. It was the role I was given, or something like that. I don't know. If, I don't know if that was like fake news or some some you know some title, but it would be. Best Something somebody would say. Female actress, Sydney Sweeney. Right Best now. female wrestler. Yeah. Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks. Yeah. They 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 are they are two peas in a pot, I'll tell you yeah. that much. I think that Sydney Sweeney is probably much better on the microphone than Sasha Banks is. Anyone is. Any any kind of movies on your radar? Um this new alien movie. I I saw the trailer for it today. It looked pretty good. Ooh. So it looked like it's pretty back to the roots of old alien. Where like is really it Scott's chronologically? Like, uh, like you know, because they're all they, over the place. Well, yeah. because they had they had Prometheus, which was four, but it wasn't it's really not, four. It was like an offshoot. But then Prometheus got a prequel or a sequel. Covenant, yeah, yeah. So, so is it like, is it like a prequel to Alien? I don't. I don't think it's that. I think it's just somewhere else in the timeline of like the good one, like one and two. All right, that's okay. what it looks like to me because it's like the Wayland kind of like eerie vibe on the ship, and then they're in the the, the stasis pods, and and then Cody Rhodes gets his head chopped off, and you realize he's an android because he's got milk for blood. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So that's pretty cool. I, I fuck with Alien. I feel like I, I appreciated Alien more as I got older. Like when I was a kid, I didn't really fuck around that that heavily with it. But yeah, well, I loved Aliens from day one. Two. Yeah, Aliens. S. I couldn't. I can't even tell you what happens in Aliens Two. Aliens. <laughs> that's the that's the James Cameron one. It's right. like arguably the best shoot 'em up ever. Right, because the first one was like horror, and the second one was like action. Yeah. Then the third one was just completely off the rails. The third one was in a prison. Right, that's right. She was she was bald. Yeah, yeah, she was in a prison, and um, the alien, um, the face hugger or whatever, uh, gets on a dog, and then it births the uh, dog alien. Hell yeah. Don't remember that. So then the dog alien is like running around. And it's like really bad CGI. <laughs> it's yeah. on the list. It's on the because when this movie comes out, I'm gonna watch all of them. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna, yeah, gotta yeah. get the timeline chronologically. Is this canon? Yeah, Romulus. It's called. I don't. I don't. Under, I don't know what the uh, significance of that is. Pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. Not a lot of. Not a lot of great movies coming out. Oh, I guess they're making a Peaky Blinders. And Killian Murphy is gonna make a is gonna be reprise Killian his Murphy, role. Yeah. Reprise his role. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is the guy's name? I say Cillian Murphy, but you know, hopefully, tomato, tomato. Uh, I'm sure Sydney Sweetie's gonna be in it too. It's gonna be awesome. No. Yeah, it's gonna be great. All right, so I guess we'll talk wrestling. Now. All right, fine. Oh well. We're gonna, uh, you know, we're gonna talk about The Rock. We're gonna talk about AEW. We're gonna disagree. I think for the first time. Um, of uh, like a a true budding of flagship heads later on okay. in the program because I think we think we vehemently disagree about something. But let's get to headlines of wrestling. Here headlines. comes the lane. Do, 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 do. Um, today is in no particular order. Um, 
First thing I noticed this week was uh, Raquel Rodriguez has been removed from the roster page. Oh, no. How many – do people wake up and, Check like, the roster page. roster page every fucking day? Aha! They're back. Oh, shit. She's gone. Wait, she's back. They, they, they track it every day. They have a spreadsheet. Sheets and sheets it, of data. It doesn't mean anything. Like, Alexa Bliss is probably still on the roster page. And she hasn't wrestled in like fucking two years. Yeah, and um, maybe they were just like updating her photo or something. <laughs> like, well, apparently she's super duper uh, under the weather. She has some like oxygen lung thing going on. Oh, so she's her life is in danger. So they took yeah, her off yeah, the roster. Yeah, page. She's, she's she's ill. You know what? It's like so oh, I, okay, let's take her off now because it would look bad if she perished and then we took her off. So let's get her off now. I, I don't I don't think it's diverticulitis, but it sounds pretty bad. <laughs> Like she's on like you know all this types of o- oxygen and like IV stuff, Damn. so I don't know what exact uh, she. It happened when she was she took the flight to Australia. Mm. That's what triggered it, and something she still about, worked the match. Something about her back and the high high pressure. Mm? Too much, too much like rolling. You know, probably punctured her lung. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! You always had the smile. <laughs> And she got a smile. Um, did you see that uh, the Bray Wyatt documentary is coming out? Oh, on yeah. my birthday! On my birthday, Pat. Is it on your birthday? April first, on my birthday. April first, the Jedi and Joe birthday by doc. the Undertaker. Nice. Um, hopefully, I guess it's gonna be. <laughs> hopefully, it's like the Undertaker with like a Tony Robbins headset doing the one man show, uh, but like walking yeah. through the set of um, what's that show with uh, Commander Riker? Is it real or is it fake? Um, <laughs> Ripley's Believe It or Not. Yeah, I guess so. Right? And he's like... Or is it... No, is it written on Ripley's No, it wasn't, it wasn't that. It was something Fact like, or fiction? Fact or fiction. Or there you go. And he's like walking through fact? it. Fact? He's going to have fiction. all the gimmicks, all the Bray Wyatt gimmicks. Or no, he's going to be in the Firefly Funhouse. And he's going to be walking... Yeah, they're going to have it. It's going to be like the Cody one. He's like, here? Yeah, they're going to... This is where Bray conjured up his most demonic... Yep. ...of gimmicks, brother. Yeah, and then the camera, like... Bray, the goes fiend into the Mountain Dew bottle and then yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And at the match like the eyes of the fiend yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah like Cody was walking through the desert he was he was in his full regalia his Homelander regalia walking through the desert discovering his old chapters of his life you know or whatever. yeah and that's exactly what the Undertaker's gonna be doing he's gonna be walking and talking using his hands um yeah but don't be fooled his legs are CGI. He's got CGI hips. Can't really walk like that that well. Taker? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, probably just a lot of uh, – looks like a lot of interview uh, talking heads, whatever, from JoJo, Hunter, Taker. Yeah. Um, Without family, a doubt. Rotunda family. Uh, the most beautiful, most gifted creative mind. Wow, his ideas. Oh, oh. You know, it actually kind of sucks that um, – Bray Wyatt had all these great ideas in the middle of like the Vince CTE pre mustache, but like he was pooping. He was in it was in the Vince pooping era. It was like the Vince that it was like the such good shit pal Vince, you know, like the Moxley yeah. gas. So like like uh, and you're burnt and you come out and you're burnt and you're melted. You know, it's like so like man, if only Bray was just a little bit too early. With all yeah, these ideas. Yeah, yeah. If he just hung out a little longer, I think it would have been fine. Yeah, like, but like, but. you know, like in 2016 like through 20, it's basically like impossible to get an idea, like a good idea out because Vince is yeah. just like senile and rewriting everything, you know, like. I mean, I think Burnt Fiend, I, if I had to guess, it'd probably be Bray's idea. Like, oh. con- because that's continuity wise, you know, like, oh, I got burned by Randy Orton, brother, you know. I'll come out burned. Burn fiend. That was the absolute fucking worst. Bum, the bum, s'mores. Bam, 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 bam. Poop gate. Yeah, yeah poop the, gate poop, era. the poop fins. And it's uh, ironic but, that that era could be labeled as the such good shit pal era as well. The such good shit pal. It's good yeah. shit. It's good shit pal. But I'm look, I'll be watching it and we'll be reviewing it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to take um, it as well. You see that uh, I got you guys kind of touched on it the on Tuesday's show. Shayna Baszler is going down to wrestle 
Masha Slamovich on Bloodsport. Hell yeah. Uh, WrestleMania I'm, weekend. I'm sure it's, it's going to be a competitive match that is very unbelie- uh, unbelievable to me. Like you like sh- like what? Uh, Masha Slamovich is gonna grab a fucking head scissor on Shayna Baszler, arm well, bar, hammerlock. Well, yeah, I mean, well, kind of some of those moves because Bloodsport <laughs> it's shoot based, it's yeah. shoot and ground MMA based. So it's it's wrestle it's MMA. Inspired. It's worked MMA. Oh. It's work, damn it. It's, it's work. It's work shoots, basically. Yeah. Work shoot fighting or shoot grapple style. Yeah, whatever. Um, I'm just more intrigued the fact of that this is now becoming a thing where, you know, you get Jordan Grace that comes over for the Rumble, Shayna Baszler, it goes down to GCW. It's pretty random. I wasn't expecting it. I mean, I know it's not a big name. It's not really moving any waves, but I mean, what else could this, you know? I mean, it's a great fit. You know, blood sport. I think I, I think it was definitely probably her idea. Because I want to do this she, shit. Yeah, because she was big at PWG, like she was a fan of PWG. Like her and Jasmine Duke and Rhonda, they all sat there. And um, who's the other one that's married to Roddy? Like you don't uh, know me. Oh, uh, um, fuck. You don't know me. Yeah. Did you know you me? Don't know me. <laughs> You don't know me. So they all used to go to the shows. And then, like, slowly, one by one, they stopped going because they all started going to the E. But, um, or to whatever respected fed. So maybe she was like, oh, this is really, like, you know, I like the indies. I, you know, this is something I really want to do. Yeah. But, you know, Moxley goes back to GCW, but the relationship between AEW and GCW is seamless. I mean, they were a farm system, essentially. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, uh, who's the last AEW wrestler that was on GCW? I guess Danhausen is uh, doing some stuff. Danhausen. I mean, I sure just Nick Wayne still take bookings, right? I, I he guess. still does. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I would say like Nick Wayne, Danhausen. Yeah, definitely was recently. And, and then he's going to um, be in a tag Moxley match. still goes there, right? I mean, no, because Mo- there, there was like a statement that like Moxley isn't taking indie dates anymore or something. Something what was happened. the reasoning behind that? I don't know, it, but something happened where it was obvious that like that was not that like that Moxie was no longer going to be going there. Okay, I mean that's whatever because he sucks. So, but um, Danhausen is teaming Nick with Gage Nick Gage. Came to AEW. I mean, like this stuff is slowly but surely happening. Yeah. So I'm just like more intrigued of how far it can go. But I, I, I don't know. I, I never really think that a main event or whatever come down to. GCW. I mean, they're not going to do business with like I don't know. Could they do business with TNA like that? I'm not really going to do business with AEW like that, unless this Matt Hardy thing is true. What's Matt Hardy going to do? Go to go be in the. They're saying that he's going to be on Mania. Yeah, he's going to be in the six pack ladder match or whatever. But I don't know if his contract. I don't know if there's an issue with him. Will Matt and Jeff's contract or something like that? So I don't. I don't know. I could also be just reading bunkhouse news. Yeah, the bottom. I of try the not. To, I try not to like. If it's a bigger news story, I try not to like write it in the notes. Like I try to, or I, I try to do a little more. Um, oh, it's just PW Insider. Did did Mike Johnson say this? You know, and then when it and then when it comes like Wrestling Observer news, I'm kind of like, eh. Oh, see, yeah. all it takes for me is just to have some kind of headline that looks yeah, like news, and I'll cool put a thumbnail, right, and it's going right in the yeah. notes. <laughs> right, the notes. Hey, did you hear thing. about this? Yeah. It's a, but apparently he was at Raw, so uh, I don't know how that's if that's going to happen. If he still has a contract with them, if they're just letting him go in like that, wrestling is weird now, man. Yo, when I forget what year it was, I'm going to say 2017, maybe when, when they, they came back. Yeah, yeah, I was there. I was like fifth fucking row, dude. Oh man, that's so dope. I you snuck know, snuck down uh, to the. When they Whatever did that, that, that was amazing. That was the last time the Hardys. I cried. Were dope. I was very drunk, but I cried. <laughs> and I don't even like the Hardys that much. <laughs> you were just overtaken by the moment. I was overtaken by the moment and how the crowd, like, I think it was because I was so close and down in there, like, 
all the energy hit me with all the beers I had. Like, yeah, so overwhelming. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> CM Punk kid. That's so fucking awesome, dude. Uh, um, yeah, but, yeah, it was, but it was that was that was so dope. Yo, and and you know what? I was in my house acting like Dallas Cowboys fan. I was like, oh, punched the TV. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh. Uh, I definitely freaked it out. You know, and yeah, like that was one of the last true pure. Hardy Boys moments, like you know, and they just wrestled the night before the Young Bucks on WrestleCon. Yeah, and uh, Super Show, so sick. Uh, that was amazing. But I don't think, I mean, if they do bring the Hardy Boys back for this this ladder match, they're not doing it for me. You know, they're doing it for they're doing it for a pop, like the E heads. <laughs> they're doing it for the E heads. They don't care about like what I think. But I, I. I'm so sick of them because of AEW. But think about how many people at Mania will think. Are where, not going to think they've yeah, been. Where, where did they go? Where, <laughs> where did Cody go? <laughs> Ooh, I know. I remember Stardust, but ah, he's different now. The Hardy Boys are wrestling Yeah, the again. E-heads. The E-heads yeah. that think there is only, like, the WWE is, like, Whoa. the only, te- only uh, you know, I've the been only reaction. Like, you know, and then they're going to cut to a guy with Jeff Hardy. Like a tattoo, like <laughs> of the enigma, like <laughs> <laughs> of the enigma, like emblem, like the 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 weird fucking thing he designed, that ugly fucking thing. Yeah. He, you know, listen, he is definitely an artist, an artiste. Like he definitely creates things. You know, he plays, he makes music, he draws and paints. But is any of his art really good? No. No. It's like but He likes it, to drink too. But it's what Jeff Hardy should should <laughs> Okay. He loves to drink. Hey, you know what? He he's one like, time, yeah, one time <laughs> one time amongst like some DUI suspension, whatever the fuck. He showed up in um uh, someone on Mania Club, which is like that super mark Facebook group. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. Nope. Um they were like doing shots with like Jeff Hardy. I'm like, you guys not know he has an issue? <laughs> Why are you drinking with him? Hey Jeff, like, come on! Oh, like, yeah, brother. <laughs> like, oh yeah, oh god. Oh, you're drinking with a wrestler, dude. Oh, he's <laughs> yeah. awesome. Did you not realize he's a fucking alcoholic? Right. He like, just got he had just fuck? got like fired or being pulled. Yo, yeah, it was about- like under something. Like he just came out of his like <laughs> sixth cent, you know, of rehab. Do you think about uh the such good shit, the poop gate era. That's when um Seamus they used the Jeff Hardy DWI thing and Seamus like they had a urine test and they like they were throwing their urine in each other's faces and like Seamus like framed Jeff Hardy for like a Dewey hit and run. You don't remember this? <laughs> kinda. I kinda yeah. do. Yeah, dude. Like, it was like like Vince was in the back thinking about growing a mustache. Throw urine on each other. And then you throw it in his face. <laughs> you piss in a cup? And then throw it in his face, pal. <laughs> more hell, urine. More so urine. Good. More p- piss piss play. But uh <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Would you would you cry if they came back? Uh for No, this? no, I could care less. I'm so disconnected to everything. And and like yeah, the Hardy Boys are just sad to me now. Like when they came back with the night you you cried and I punched the TV, um, that was very special. But even and even like for maybe a brief moment, Matt Hardy when he was teleporting around the AEW empty arena, mm-hmm, that like mm-hmm. seemed like a big deal at the time. Like oh fuck, oh my god, Matt Hardy. You know, like yeah. But ever but you know, he is like a running joke, Matt Hardy. Yeah. And so is Jeff in a completely different, like, kind of sadder way. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. But you know, the E, they don't care. Just show up. Oh, my God. It made them. It made the show for me. Oh, my God. I, I What a moment. Well, and and also, then The Rock was on the show. And then Tell so <laughs> won. And, oh, my God. I can't wait for n- tomorrow night. The yeah. Raw after Mania. You know it's the biggest Raw of these seasons. No, no. Tomorrow. No, no. no it's two oh, nights two now. Night, so two right, okay. The next night. And then, and then you have the next night. Yeah. And then that night, yeah, then Raw After Mania. Feed me more. <laughs> Feed me more. 
Uh, yeah, but you know, and honestly, just I know we're staying on this for a while, but I I kind of want that for them. You know, like Jeff Hardy is a legend, and he just got like his face imploded by Sammy Guevara. Give him one last mania entrance. You know, fuck it, fuck it. But like, would he still be in AEW? I don't. That's the thing. No, nah, they're just Tony's going to be like, you know what, guys? I release you. I love you. You know. Well, they don't need them, so probably. All right, what else? Let's um, let's keep it moving. Sorry about that. It's just so fascinating to me, and the Jeff Hardy dance is just so intoxicating. Um, so remember we talked about this uh, this this actor who decided to name drop Matt Cardona and say like, "Oh God, this fucking guy! <laughs> what the fuck is this guy's name? What show is he even on? He won an Emmy for what? He won an Emmy for being a Mark." <laughs> <laughs> um and uh the biggest mark yeah the biggest mark and he, he the, the emmy was like in a storyline where like stokely hathaway or no uh sanjay dutt like carried the emmy for like a few weeks was it yeah like they stole his emmy and then like they were carrying around an emmy and like for a while like they're they're like um you know, must foreign, have been on rampage for an object of choice was like the emmy because they still kind of remember uh, this now. What's the guy's um, name? Matthew Hauser Levitt or Je- Johnny? Something like that. Johnny yeah. Jim Housen. He, I mean, I've seen him in like older, like just lame comedies and shit. Is but, he the um, kid from the Sixth Sense grown up? No, that's no. no. <laughs> OK. <laughs> um. So, yeah, I guess he had a match with Matt Cardona. I mean, Matt Cardona will do anything for money. Um. They had I saw the po- the flyer. Jimmy yeah. Jim John's Housen man was fighting it, Matt Cardona in a match, and I was like, "Oh, was, where is this?" It was like in it, Iowa it, or something. It wasn't in GCW. It was like it was in like the big event Iowa. Or something. For some reason, Circle Six came right to my mind, but I knew it wasn't that. Um, yeah, some some fed somewhere, and then it ended up Cardona going through a flaming table by Bully Ray. Oh, Bully Ray! So Bully Ray, because to- the 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 gentleman could not pick up. You know, two hundred and thirty pound or two forty, whatever pound. Uh, you know, oh my all God. meat and muscle Cardona. So he had Bully Ray power bomb to a flaming table. It was a huge flaming table, like hardcore fucking spot. It looked nice. really good. Good for Matt. Good for Matthew Cardona. Not good. Not but, good for that guy. I hate that guy. That guy's so annoying. The, yeah, the actor. It, I, I don't think it did anything for the business. So. <laughs> Speaking of business, Exposure, brother. brother. This yeah, guy's an Emmy Award winning actor. Yeah, I don't think it, it's, it's like best, not, best it's extra in a, in a TV anybody. drama. Um, Did you see that CZW is running the Murphy Rec Center WrestleMania weekend? What is the Murphy Rec Center? Should I care about this? Murphy Rec Center is where Ring of Honor got their debut, uh, got their start. Oh, cool. Sorry. Small, I'm not a big I used to walk by it all the time during uh, COVID. Um, it was, uh, it's a small, um, gymnasium, straight gymnasium, you know, basketball court. Hell yeah. Gymnasium. And then, uh, it was like a pool, you know, just an after out after YMCA. School, yeah. Or after school program kind of ish, you know, yeah, for the neighborhood. Um, but CCW is not running an official show there. They're running their, uh, the, the other thing they have there. The other thing, limelight. Yes, that's what it is. That's yeah. like their. That's like I think their student show. Yeah, I don't expect a lot of people to be there, but I think we should maybe try to go. I think it kind of fits into my itinerary. That's so. kind of cool. Because... I've just never been to a show in that building, and as a Ring of Honor vet, yeah, I kind of, I kind of need to go. And yeah, bu- <laughs> buildings are important in wrestling. You know what I'm saying? Like, like Another... iconic venues. Like, that's kind of. Oh, I think it's the same. I think it's earlier in the day on Saturday, so it's like it lines up with Mania, but. I think it goes head to head with NXT, so I don't know. Um, that's what, like, you know, I saw ECW at the Elks Lodge in Queens. You know, yeah, like and, or like, and I, but I used to see it on TV first. Then I actually went there. So then, when like, <laughs> a, you know, BCW twenty years later runs at the side room of the Elks Lodge, I'm like, I'm we're going to the Elks Lodge. You know, like wrestling yeah, in the brother. Elks Lodge. Twenty three hundred, brother. Let's take selfies in front of the ECW uh, bathroom art. Yeah, no. <laughs> I saw at the I went to the old ECW arena a few times or when it became New Alhambra. 
And then um, not the not the redone one. That's the 2300 one. Like new Alhambra was after they shyly redid it before the actual renovation. And right. I saw a Hardcore Homecoming. Was that what that was? Not Tommy Dreamer's Fed. The one before that when they used to, when they did like a small tour and it was like a small ECW reunion tour. Uh it's vague sounds vaguely familiar. I think it was hardcore homecoming. I think it was. I saw was uh Cage of Death. Uh well yeah, that there. I never did Cage of Death there. I've done uh But see, oh actually the, the last Cage of Death I went to it was fully renovated, like fully like redone. Yeah, I, I went to that show too. Yeah, but uh but yeah, i I was there when it was like a I went shell. to like the joint show R O R H C Z W there. Never at a uh, never at an ECW show there though. Never a little bit. Before well, the hardcore time. homecoming. That's why I brought it up. Was like an ECW show, right? It had like you know impact I was players. There. Yeah, I was, I was there, there, brother. And they had chairs, <laughs> so like it was a steel chair, but it wasn't like padded and with artwork. They just took an artwork like decal, like a big sticker, and put it on the seat. And on the back. Pretty dope. That was it. Did you steal it? I, no, no, you were allowed to leave with it. Oh, did you take it? I mean, did you go home? Oh, yeah, I take it. And then I got I got a bunch of people to sign it. Like, just incredible, drunkenly signed it. Like, if the chair is this big, he's like <laughs> all over the fucking thing. Uh, Bully Ray. Bully Ray. Uh, I Rhino. saw just incredible at a show. Kronos. Late Kronos. Nice. Rest in peace. I don't know what I did with it. I think it got thrown out or. Somebody, somebody, uh, I think someone might have sold it. It wasn't me that sold it. I think I left it at my house and like a relative sold it or something. I saw Justin oh. Credible when he was uh, old and fat and uh, not as not as big as he is now. But uh, I always loved the Got Blood shirt, you know, like the iconic. Who's was that? Uh, you know, I don't know if it, I guess it eventually became his. I guess it's kind of more like a Necro Butcher choose death situation like this shirt had already existed but then it just became synonymous with just incredible got blood and um choose death yeah choose death got blood catchy stuff um and i was like yo do you have any got blood this is how much of a mark i was i just thought i just assumed that just incredible would have a uh, hundreds of got blood shirts to sell me you know i was like hey you got any got blood shirts he's like i'll give you this one off my back for twenty dollars I didn't take it. It was all sweaty, and I was like, "I don't want. I don't. I'm not gonna buy your shirt that you're wearing. That's crazy." That's what I used to do. Not like buy it because they had it. It would. It'd be like they didn't have the shirt anymore, and it was already like maybe cut into a muscle tee. I'm like, "Do you have that shirt anymore?" No. I was like, "Well, I'll buy the one you got." <laughs> nice spaghetti string muscle shirts. <laughs> it wasn't that then. Well, it wasn't that. Then. Get ready, guys, because it's it is warming up. So we're going to expect you to wear some of those on the... Well, I haven't lost any weight, so probably not. We're going to have to bust out the guns. Yeah. You know what you got to do? You got to set up your TV so that you have to do some kind of fucking trap thing, you know, like... Oh, yeah, yeah, like... <laughs> exactly. Um. What else is going on? Uh, oh, jo Joe, I have a, a big announcement for you. What's up? I was really, really paralyzed by guilt last week after you watched <laughs> Biography and Dark Side of the Ring and Rivalries. Rivals I, didn't watch, I haven't watched Rivalries at all yet, but um, I watched uh, Dark Side, so Bio, because they're good. I, uh, I decided to start pulling my weight, and late Monday night after Raw, I watched, um, let me see if I can remember, uh, DDP, DDP Yoga, and the birth of DDP Yoga. Uh, biography, which was great. Yeah, it was good. Uh, yeah, it's just well done. DDP's cool, you know. Yeah, DDP. Best part of DDP one was the fact they got Kimberly, also to interview. Yes, she was his like, wife, his late, but not late wife. Excuse me, his first wife. His whatever. first wife. Yeah, and um, former Nitro girl. Yeah, and uh, you know, once he became obsessed with DDP yoga, she was like, you know, this this isn't you working work for me. <laughs> like you're, you doesn't know, work for me, brother. Doesn't work for me, brother. Yeah, and then his I was new wife is just her. like a footnote in the, the, the like in the last like thirty seconds as the credits yeah, are rolling. Yeah, nothing. Like, and I got another. I got a new wife now, and I love her very much. I got yeah, a new yeah. less hot wife, but I'm fine with it. You know. You Dally, bro. Yeah, yeah. Dally was uh, 
nothing, no one has anything bad to say about him. I mean, he's only, like Nash said, he's more known for what he did outside of the ring after his career was over than he actually did in the ring. Save you know? Jake the Snake's life. You know, I didn't know that Jake the Snake was his original, like, first wrestler friend, though, either. Uh, which is Oh, yeah, yeah, stuff. I didn't know it was his friend friend. I knew it was his first rehab or one of the first rehabs all the uh old photos of him running the nightclub like looking like a crazy person uh, yeah with like the curls and the glasses yeah. and that was his gimmick you know, and, and yeah even that, that old footage when he was the manager and he had the diamond club or whatever the diamond district or uh, the norma norma jean was the name of the one club or something like that yeah and then, he yeah, was yeah. dope that was dope i didn't know any i didn't I'd never seen any of that footage of him being like that young yeah, that's oh, why they, I like these documentaries. They yeah. showed, the, yeah, the footage is dope, and they showed the iconic moment. Look, hold on. You have a tattoo of DDP? No. Oh, I'm getting chill, goosebumps. Chills. Oh, you gotta go like this. Um, when they give him the shirt, and he's gonna be in the NWO, and he, and yo, know, oh yeah, yeah, that's the moment that changed my life because that's when I realized that you can tell a person's true intentions by seeing what shirt they are wearing. You know, DDP, he wore, he wore the shirt. Fucking RK. He, he might as well have gone deep undercover. That was like some departed shit. In wrestling, you never fake wear the shirt. Yeah. The shirt that you're wearing is always what lies in your heart. But no, DDP fucking... And, and the way that uh, Hall took the cutter, too, that diamond cutter, and... Uh, it was just so dope. And, well, and all their know, backs were turned. Yeah, well, all their backs were turned. And then he ran through the audience, and then it cuts to Kevin Nash with a twinkle in his eye. And he's like, and a star is born. Yeah. And yeah, that yeah, his was, career like, wasn't long. Yeah. Reliving but, uh, that. Because that, when I was a kid, I was like, yo, that was fucking awesome. Like, that got DDP over for me as a kid. Yeah, I love DDP. Yeah, he's probably my favorite. I think you're like the more than Sting. And then he won the, and then they showed him winning the world champion. Like chip after nothing that WCW did mattered. Like he won in like two thousand or whatever, you know. Like I he think won he won. Like some he weird... didn't he win and like um that was the pay per view where like they cut off the pay per view cut off. I don't remember that. But it was and like then a you had to tune into Nitro the, the next night to see who actually won the match. If you didn't, yeah, no. Even if you want, even if you had the pay per view, you had to still tune in the next night to find out who won. So, Damn. um. Yeah, it was like some was wacky match, match between like it was like Ric Flair, uh, Sting, and like somebody who was gonna take the pin. <laughs> you know, I forget. It was like a four way, and it was so yeah. obviously like after WCW was like. Was it like Jarrett? It might have. It might have been somebody like that. Yeah, it was somebody who was like gonna take the pin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was so obviously like after WCW was like off the rails. I can't wait till like that moment comes with AEW. <laughs> what? What do you mean? They're already off the rails. Yeah, yeah. Like what? What will be the final match? That will be synonymous like the ending of of the AEW. name on the dotted line says McMahon. But not says it. Khan. <laughs> yeah, it says Khan. <laughs> but it says Tony Khan. <laughs> I own WWE. What happened on Dark Side of the Ring? Uh, it was about. I watched it today. It was about Terry Gordy, one of the uh, Freebirds. Do you know who that is? I mean, uh, you know the fabulous Freebirds. Yeah, I know the Freebirds. I know Terry Gordy. I couldn't tell you my favorite match of his. I just know that he had them. I mean, he was a part of the um, whole like uh, brutal as fuck strong style, like Japanese style. You know, like with Masawa and. Oh, and Dr. Death. He and was in a tag Dr. team. Death with and that, I yeah. always confuse him with the fucking other guy, Tracy Smothers. I feel like I always confuse. Yeah, he looks very similar to Tracy. Uh, no, these he's two bigger guys. than Tracy. Yeah. Um, he is the father also of Jesse and Jesse and Festus. Festus is Doc Gallows. Okay. Do you remember this gimmick? Nope. Jesse and Festus was the little guy that would come out with Doc Gallows, and Doc was always like, Oh, okay. I feel like I, I feel like I know that Doc Gallows face. <laughs> he come out looking like that, and then the guy who would wrangle him was was Gordy's uh, 
son. Nice. So he was a wrestler. And then he had a, he has a daughter who currently wrestles, I believe. So, but I don't think she's anywhere that we would know. Good for him. And um, is this guy still alive? Terry? Yeah. No, no. He passed so he passed away um from like a blood clot. Um so what happened, his story was is that he was doing all the Japan routes and stuff like that Cabin and pressure. then he yeah, I think he also started um like he would take so many pills to like, you know, he just OD, he OD'd on his pills Bummer. and then, but he lived through that. Oh, okay. and then it like yeah. nuked his brain pretty much. <laughs> like he went into a coma Oh man. and he never was like the same. So like, it just, you could tell there was like no one home. He couldn't really talk oh. and then he would still, he would still wrestle, but it wasn't the same, you know, the punches aren't there. Like he was known for his punches were really good and shit. And just like the match, like just nothing. And the cornet was like, he actually cried about it. He got really upset because it was like, you know, he wasn't himself anymore. You know, it was completely full. It was the talking heads were cornet, Foley, his son, his daughter, nephew. I don't think one of the wrestlers were also, you know, involved. Um, Cornette's kind event- of a, getting to be an old softy in his old age. Cornet? Yeah. He's like an he's like an emo guy. You know, well. Well, I mean, he knew him a while. I mean, he he worked. He this was before Cornette when the Freebirds were in Mid South. Cornette was a photographer. That was his first wow. gig. Wow. And also, I don't know this. The Freebirds were also the first people, at least according to Cornette in this show, they were the first people to ever come out with entrance music. Like huh. they popped in um, Freebird by Skinnerd. And then, you know, crowd pops. Oh, my God. Da, 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 da. And then Cornette's like, oh, I think this is going to catch on. Wow. <laughs> now, everyone has music now. So, if you smell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So th- I think this is one of my favorite ones. So kind of made me want to go back and watch like him versus Masawa and all these old like, you know. Yeah, I know that. um I only know about that because Cornette did, uh, he interviewed the Dark Side of the Ring guy and they ran through like all of the episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it, it does seem to be getting stronger as it goes on. Well, you Sandman's know? coming up. Yeah, you got Sandman and then you got another like crazy one. Uh, oh, Black Saturday where Vince like buys all the territories or whatever, I guess. Yeah, or something. Yeah. So th- that those seem interesting. Yeah, so, you know, still going strong. Love it, live for it. Yeah, exactly, John. It's like he's no he knew he knew Terry since the seventies. So it's just I just like I like that he ha- is in touch with his emotions. I just think that's dope. Well, he knew the guy his whole life. So. Yeah, yeah, but you know, it's like I don't know. I like I like seeing that side of Jim. Uh, one of the uh, one of the guys uh, who who died, I guess Bobby Eaton died, and on his pod he was like really upset about it. Or, oh yeah, you know well, I mean? he was just mad. They're mad. Yeah, but it was just, it's just dope to like uh, see him like care about like humans and shit. Because <laughs> usually he shits on everybody. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> He's like such a callous and remorseful promo that it's like so refreshing to see him like you know be thoughtful and like you know like kind of introspective and like you know get emotional and shit. How can you miss me if I won't go away, brother? Um, any other headlines you want to cover? I think that might be it. Yo, uh, actually, I thought about this the other day, or uh, earlier real quick, just because you mentioned diverticulitis. What's going on with John Cena and Kenny Omega? Seen this? That John Cena... Oh, uh, yeah. What did, like, he, John, like, posted a picture of, like, cleaner Kenny Omega. Right. As John no, also does, does things, he does a lot of things cryptically on Instagram. He's very cryptic on Instagram. Yeah, he always posts a pic. Right. No context. Right. That's all. Y- y'all talk so. about it. And then people are like, what do you Oh, my God. And, and then, then you happens. know, whereas, like, you take how cool John Cena is on Instagram where he just, like, posts a picture and, like, I'll just leave this here. Of course, Kenny reacted like any indie Mark would and was like, hey, at John Cena, saw that you posted a picture. You know, like, he just had to, like, immediately address it. And I guess he posted himself in the Princess Jasmine gear. Kenny Omega, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then posted a photo of uh, Kenny Omega dressed like a woman in Ricky Stanicki, I guess. And he's like, hey, okay. John Cena, who wore it better? LOLs, best friends forever. 
It's like, okay, Kenny. Lame. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, hey, you know what? Yeah, like you could have a match with John Cena. Maybe if you stumped your tummy didn't hurt. Or just, yeah, didn't play a mark. <laughs> um. So did you watch this interview with Renee and Mercedes moan? <laughs> I watched it because you sent it to me. Yes, I uh Watched about 90 seconds of it. It was like, I can't. I don't think I could do this. I watched I'm all like, 12 minutes and 36 <laughs> seconds of it or whatever the fuck. I, I have I to. I'm, I'm, I'm really. I really want to go. How far can I go down this rabbit hole with her? Because she really has no idea. No self-awareness. I think she's the like most unself-aware person. Like ever to be put, put on this planet. She really thinks she's like. She's the hottest shit, taken, like the greatest thing since sliced bread. She's taking AEW Global, brother. I'm gonna take. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna take this place. I'm gonna take AEW to the global scale, the global scale, while shaking my ass. All right, enough. You don't like that, huh? You don't like her new no. entrance. Um, Striptease. Croman, uh, we have a new chatter who says AEW has been really solid these last four weeks. Thank you, TK. Um, I actually was going to further. Uh, I can back that. I would say it's solid. the The match quality has gone up. The show, the shows, and the booking haven't have have been the worst that's ever been. But like, there'll be like one. Ever since the pay per view where Osprey showed up, ever since those matches, and then the Fletcher match, and then we got the really good pay per view that following Dynamite. We had the I Quit last night with uh, Edge and um, Christian, um, and then there's just like spot singles, either one or two spots on the show, men's singles. Well, you knew that Edge that had been really good. Were gonna bring it to last night. You know that you know that anything they like. I trust Edge and Christian to be like, oh, okay, they're gonna have a but banger anywhere on. Yeah, any every Dynamite has had at least one to two really good matches. Well, and and yeah. for better or worse, even though you know the women's division is like oh, so so bad, and I fear that that's why I said men's because the women division is in the shitter and it's just only getting worse now. Well, that... at least there's intrigue with Moan. Is there though? She's feuding with. She's like six different people. people. Yeah, she's feel, she's she, feeding with six different people. What well, uh, the smartest thing they could have did was have her show up and then just get interrupted by Britt Baker. Yep, and have I was, Britt Baker I was just I was just thinking. like, why didn't that happen? Yeah, I think it's just egos. Everyone and everyone's Kevin Nashing themselves. Like did you role. see that there was a tweet actually uh, that Dave Meltzer reported? Somebody else reported that Dave Meltzer reported that uh, there is some dissension and unhappy campers in the women's division who have been there since the very beginning, who helped build the company. And Sasha Banks is getting paid, you know, a crazy amount of money. Yeah. Uh, highest paid women's wrestler of all time, most likely. Right. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, there's some like uh, chatter that like uh, the original ladies don't really like that. And you know, I immediately thought of Britt Baker right away. That's the first. Well, she has been. She's very vocal. Yeah, but I mean, I guess like you know, she, I wouldn't be surprised if she leaked that to Dave herself. You know, it was like, hey, I just want you to know, some ladies are unhappy, Dave. You know. Yeah. I could like hear her uh, saying it, but yeah, they don't really have like a top person for Willow to feud with. The uh, I feel like WWE has a really bad road to WrestleMania booking. The weekly shows have been trashed the last four weeks. I agree. Commercial breaks. I agree. Drugs, cheap pops, poop, and family chokes. Slow motion matches. Come on. Yeah, I agree. Wade yeah. Thunder Rose is good. DMD will probably return. Julia needs to drop the title. Agreed. Hater gonna and return. Yeah. Hater gonna return. Yeah, I guess Thunder Rose is back in the mix. She was. She had like a tag match, right? She had a tag match with uh, it was Thunder Rosa and Deanna Peraza defeating Mariah May and Tony Storm. It was the lowest rated match. No, it actually wasn't the lowest rated match on the show. Lowest rated match, according to cagematch.net, was Hook defeating Chris Jericho, which was booked like 
a poor man, Cena and Brock Lesnar, like Suplex City. Right. Uh, Hook, Hook was suplexing the shit out of a uh, out of um Jericho, and then Jericho's like get the wind knocked out of him, and like you know his good spell get gets wrong, and you know, and then you know, and then he loses. He he they he defeated him. Like they keep put. What are they doing with this? Like they keep putting, like they're putting Hook over on him. I think. Well, I Honestly, think it's just thinking it's... my in the back of my head. I think Jericho's leaving soon, like not leaving for good. I think he's about to go on break. I think it's just Jericho's ego of I want to I'm going to be I'm giving. Look at how giving I am. Look at how look at how I'm taking the I'm working with all this younger talent and I'm taking losses to them like but it's not really helping because there's no greater context or good storytelling to it like in my imagination Jericho is just pulling the strings on this because he wants to be able to just say that he worked with younger talent and put younger talent yeah. over. I don't know why I had the feeling that Jericho might be like going on break soon. Maybe it's just because that's what needs to happen. What have I become? You know, like with the sh- the shows getting not the shows not getting better, but the quality of matches for the men's getting better. I don't know. It's, and then his match is always the worst match on every show. Tell like me the, about this. Um, Mercedes Monet promo to open up the show though. We talked about her talk appearances. I want to know if her promo was just to open the same the, show the same shit. She comes out dancing, everyone CEO, CEO of fucking what? They didn't have they still haven't explained what she is the CEO of. CEO of Simps. She's just making it happen. She makes things happen, Joe. Yeah, I'm the CEO of this women's revolution. I made a revolution. In another company, and now I'm bringing it and I'm making it a global revolution. And when I was Sasha Banks, and then and then Tony Khan's like, oh, oh <laughs> fuck me. They, they 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 allow people to say WWE shit all the time. Why is he fucking making faces when she says Sasha or the interviewer says? Did she Sasha? strip again this week? She came out in this long robe. Very long robe, big fluffy robe, majestic, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then takes it off, you know, and then kind of like starts twerking at the end of the ramp. And then she goes up the to the to the apron. Right. And then starts like booty shaking. She does a new butt bounce move. CEO equals boss with two money signs, Joe. Yeah. BCO is like the boss gimmick in WWE. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, but that's what Cornette said. It's like poor, poorly executed. Dollar General. <laughs> poorly executed uh, remnants of the old gimmick from somewhere else. Or <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, it is. It is basically like it's like how Edge had to change all his tights from E-D-G-E to C-O-P-E, but kept all his designs. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. <laughs> on this day. Yeah. On this day. Yeah. I think in the promo, she just mentioned Willow as well. Hell yeah. Yeah, she's like, I was the new Japan strong. I went all across the world and I had such a journey I was on. She was in, she wrestled for two fucking months, bro. <laughs> and she's been injured for 10 fucking months. <laughs> I've been on such a journey. <laughs> I stunk I stunk it up in New Japan, yeah. and now I'm here to stink it up back in the States once again. I stunk it up in Even more New Japan. money. Uh, yep. Yeah. Um, and her I, hair is so stupid. That's what I got, so from, that promo. That's what I got so from that stupid. promo. I was looking at that clip of her sitting on this like talk show. She's on like, a normal human being talk show. And her hair looks like a fucking little kid spray painted it. It looks like so like so this this woman who is smaller than Tony Khan is like t- explaining to like a talk show a morning show host with her hair like yeah it's uh, yeah I don't get it I don't get it and you know what I really never got it with her like you know uh, Bailey versus her NXT Takeover all right fine reverse Hurricane Rana all that shit great fine. But, you know, I mean, I feel like she's been overrated for a long, long time. Remember the match with Melina when she was doing like the. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Melina does the. Uh, yeah, the, you know, the, the, the slided split. thing. 
like Bianca was doing, uh, not Bianca, uh, like Sasha was doing like this split where she bounced her, her vagina off the fucking canvas like multiple times. Like it was nothing. Well, and also, um, <laughs> she's always been kind of like ratchet. It's well, so funny. She, uh, she dressed like Sailor Moon and did the, the hump. That was split. that. Yeah. That was that. Yeah. Dressed as Sailor Moon yeah. doing as if you ratchet needed, shit. Yeah. She needed to really secure the key demo. So she turned it up yeah. notch, dressed like Sailor Moon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so after that, the first match on the show was for the Continental Breakfast no. title. No. Uh, <laughs> Okada defeats Eddie Kingston. The flagship championship. Ah, this is no. our fucking belt. They no. ruined it. You mean they the inaugural it. first champion who put his money where his mouth is originally and combined the ring of... Wait, so does that mean Okada is also the ring of honor champion now? No. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah. Is yeah, it? yeah, that's right, yeah. Because the one yeah, belt is. is all they three. Them. Yeah, they combine them. The continental title is is one time. They melted it down. Remember they we were talking that, about it's like on the table. The months. table. Yeah. So it's a new Japan Strong Open yeah, yeah. Weight Championship. The continental title is it gets represented in AEW Ring of Honor and New Japan Strong. Right, which is like New Japan, except it's not in Japan. New Japan Strong is American New Japan. <laughs> right. So New it's Japan strong, strong, though. Is, it's strong. It's strong, but it's, that's like New Japan, except not in Japan. Got it. Yeah. So, so wow. Okada put oh, no, no, his Hold, hold on. Someone in the chat is saying Eddie is defending the ROH World title at <laughs> ROH pay per view. No. But what about when he know. put is his money where his mouth was? Fuck me, dude. Oh, man. Eddie versus Mark Briscoe for the ROH world title. Well, I mean, I don't think that that's valid because they took all three belts, they put them on the table, and then yeah. they had the one belt on the table. It made one title. And I thought it, it was a one, unification. It was a unification of the three, of the two belts, plus the third belt. Um, I feel like we got to look up that Tony Khan scarf. They probably deleted it. They probably deleted it from YouTube. They probably yeah, edited it. Says, it yeah, it says R- uh, on the roster page, it says Eddie Kingston, ROH World Champion. What in God name? They've, oh, yeah, so they split, split them. The so they combined them and then they split them. They combined them and then they split them again? <laughs> Did they not tell anyone that? I, I think they just... Damn. But what about the whole tournament where... I was kind of hoping we'd see Okada on the ROH show. I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, this is cool. Oh, never mind. Uh, and he said we get Billy put Starks. His money where his mouth was, and he said that he was gonna, he wanted the Continental Classic to mean something, so he's gonna defend his titles in every match that he wrestled during yeah, yeah. the Continental Classic Championship. At that point, the belts were all three separate. But then Tony Khan came out. He was wearing the scarf, and he said that he was combining. He was stripping. He was taking the belts from Eddie Kingston who put his money where his mouth was, and he was putting them now on a table. And the table was going to represent all three championships in I, one. Yes. God damn it. And Eddie Kingston lost. And then they put then their they money where their the- mouth was, <laughs> and they decided to take the money back out of their mouth. Yeah, they took the money back out uh, of their so mouth. So, yeah, Okada them. is the new Continental Championship. This, is, this, will be, his mouth this will build prestige to this new title. He's going to go defend it at New Japan Strong. <laughs> Right after he left, he's going to be the uh, so after that was the shitty hook uh, Jericho match and then the bad uh, women's tag. And after that, we got um, Swerve Strickland defeating the butcher every time I die. Hey, Andy. It was only three minutes. I didn't get a score because it was uh, you can't um, when a match is below five minutes, it doesn't get a score. Okay. Um. And then the main event was well, actually I'm trying to think of other moments on the show. So there was um, when did they show the Bucks? I think it was. I guess they showed the Bucks in the During first the match Okada with Okada. Match, yeah. Yeah. So they showed they the Bucks in the gorilla position, yeah. which right next to Tony Khan with the fucking and, and Tony's like, which makes no sense. Like it really, if you think about it. Now they're going to break this wall? This is how they're going to break the wall just right, like so, that? So, so theoretically speaking, they were on the headset telling the ref to tell Eddie Kingston to lose to Okada. Yeah. Yeah, with the cute and audible. Like, and Tony Khan sat <laughs> there and home, didn't brother. do anything. 
Did, he didn't. He didn't say like. No, I think guys. they were like. You see that move? Did you see that move? And then like he was just like, oh yeah, that's a great move. You know, whatever. I just don't think like yo know, tongue and cheek stuff is okay. Like there's a place for comedy and tongue and cheek stuff in wrestling. Yeah, but I don't think that you. Like Mr. McMahon was the owner of Raw, so he would come out and say like Stone Cold, I hate you. You're, I'm, I'm, I'm stacking the deck. I have this whole plan this week to fuck you because I have all the power, right? Uh-huh. But the Young Bucks are saying they're EVPs, but they don't really have, they're not really declaring power, but they're insinuating that they can make their own matches and make their own finishes to matches. But then why didn't they beat Sting and Darby? <laughs> Sting went off script, so, brother. So the main event. <laughs> so the main event was uh, for the TNT title. Am I bugging? Am I looking too much into this, Joe? No, like, no. I just bucks? think I just that's how I transition when uh, there's really no <laughs> logic behind it. <laughs> I just like not what behind what you're saying, behind what they're doing. It makes no shit sense. Uh, Edge defeated uh, Christian in a really, really, really good I quit match, but <laughs> they fucked. They fucked up, right? So they're advertising the whole show. It's going to be a three-hour live, uh, whatchamacallit. It's going to be two hours. I thought it was a three-hour dynamite. No, That's what they made it see, sound like. Did you see on the flyer? I, I had to do my own investigations on the flyer for the show because they had the show, right? And yeah. then at the like, and they had each like match had like a little like bar on the flyer with like the new dynamite shit. And there was one match that was like... Old, it looked like old graphics. And I was like, "What did they just like use this old graphic on this new flyer?" Like, there's like, "Oh no!" Then you read the bottom; it's like AEW plus Rampage. So that's the Rampage match. Yeah, but yeah. yeah I so didn't, it uh... wasn't a three hour dynamite. It was like, "Okay, good night, everybody. Hello, and everybody. They... Welcome to AEW." So the fin- yeah. So the finish was. Did you watch this? No, but I, I... at the finish, it was everyone's handcuffed. In right. the corners. Nick, Nick Wayne, Ever since Luchasaurus. Mick Foley, you can't do an I Quit match without handcuffs. Every exactly. single I Quit match from since Royal Rumble 99 has somehow had to incorporate fucking handcuffs. Yeah. There was a lot of run-ins. Were they real handcuffs course. or were they wrestling handcuffs where they were, like, spread apart? <laughs> like, were they, like... I mean, no one broke them. No one like broke them like they, they did. Like this? Oh, they were no. They put him in the back, uh, back of they they did it around the post. Right, but was so it they like were like wrist this. to wrist, or was it they were like sl- slack? There was like slack. There they was had, like, slack. Like, yeah, so because look, look at me. Are you watching me? Look at me. I'm, I'm, <laughs> like the post is behind me. Yeah, they yeah. had him in the corner. Well, I'm just like saying that. that Mick Foley in '99 used the real jams. Yeah, the wrist yeah. to wrist ones. But he had him on during the match. Right. I'm sorry. He had him on and had to wrestle like that. Right. right? He was taking bumps. With the oh no, he was him, from yeah. behind, and he was taking bumps that way. Yeah. Where so this was just to detain all three parties, you know. So he also did it to Christian, <laughs> and he puts Christian up like a curtain call style. You right, know? I've seen. I and saw he this. Kicks yeah. him in the nuts once, right? Edge kicks him in the nuts once, and he's like, "What do you say? What do you say?" And he's like, "No, never." <laughs> there were a lot of funny no's in this, and then. He goes up to him again and kicks him like about twenty fucking times in the in the dick. Right. right. What do you say? <laughs> no. Okay. So then he goes up. Edge goes out. First of all, they're not not to undermine the whole match. Like there were a lot of, of really good spots. There was like ladder spots and table spots and like we were gigging. It was a really good match. Um, he goes out and gets the briefcase labeled Spike. It's like in a in like a. Uh, guitar, guitar yeah case. yeah i've seen yeah, it. it's like a, it's like in a fucking gibson explorer really fucking really big... really disappointed that spike dudley wasn't in that case when he originally... should have been in the game <laughs> oh what a surprise Aha! Uh, what a maneuver yeah um so spike is just the it's the, the bondage the, it's the, the demolition. black metal the yeah. black metal gauntlet mm-hmm. like basically attached to a two by four yeah, so he goes up and just wax fuck uh wax him in the fucking dick with this. Right. And he still says no. So he he wha- he backs up and they're asking him, all of a sudden the lights just go out. Match okay. is still on. Lights come back up and it's like, oh, welcome to Rampage. Oh, da, 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 da. 
Like, no. Uh, in the middle of the match. And then he goes like this. And he's about to hit him. And he goes, oh, I quit. I quit. Then the match ends. So the match ended like 30, 45 seconds into Rampage. Wow. They couldn't fucking make it happen in the. So wait, you're no saying communication. the house lights went down or like the TV feed went black? I think the house lights went down, too. Um, our new friend, uh, Chromanocle, says that we we be hating too hard. Oh, okay. Uh, we, yeah, we, that's we, what we do here. Sorry. We're hating too <laughs> hard on AW. I'm a huge fan of AW, and I want to see Tony Khan on my on every, every show I watch should have Tony Khan either on it or talking about it afterwards. Uh, because I find him highly entertaining. But yes, they're, you know, listen, it's like any TV show. You, you point out the good, you point out the plot holes. Yeah, I saw that uh, that Edge hit Christian in the dick with Spike. Which is also so stupid. Because, like, you announce, you announce the weapon. You do a promo announcing the weapon, right? And then, like, you don't use it until the very end. Like, if he was announced a weapon, he should have been going for the weapon the whole match. I mean, I didn't, I didn't watch it, so I don't know. But it's like, you hit him in the balls with it, really? I don't know. I mean, I guess that makes sense because where are you going to hit him with this fucking thing? Well, either way, I, maybe he shouldn't have sat there bullshitting, kicking him thirty times in the nuts and. Maybe the just nut, hit him a few times in the, the nuts. Nut Maybe finish. one time in the nuts, then went for the weapon. All they had to do was just speed it up by like 40 seconds, and it would have been. They did it again. Like, they did this with Sting. I think they, I think they, on TV at least, I feel like they do the overrun to, like, catch the 10 o'clock, to try to catch the 10 o'clock people. I guess there are people in the or United the States. Or, or the, the, the old movie. The Shelton show. Yeah, or the, yeah, I guess people tune Isn't in. It, it's like Young Sheldon. Isn't that coming on after? Or there's a movie or something. But I guess people like tune in to like TBS. I think it's Young Sheldon movie. that comes on after. So they do that to like catch the... To try to like... So they... that, that like uh, I think it like inflates the numbers somehow. Where mm. it's like, oh, our 10 to 10.04... Was like a, a one point five, you know, or whatever the fuck, and it's like, oh wow, well that and then it raises the mean or something, you know, like yeah. I don't know how it works, but that would be my guess is that it's like a purposeful, like we're gonna get the ten o'clock audience, you know? Yeah, but they don't like they do. They did it with Sting, man. It went too fucking long. I mean, there's no, there's no one coming on after that. It's the end of the show. Right. There's too much shit on the show. So, but next week looks really good. Uh, next week is, uh, Takeshita versus, oh, um, Osprey? No. no. Uh, he, Takeshita he versus Swerve. Chat. Swerve, yeah. It's Swerve versus Takeshita, and then, uh, Osprey versus. I said I couldn't walk a mile down your Brian's shoes. Because my feet are too big, bruv. It's uh, it's a it's a good matchup next week. He uh, there's at least like two to three good matches lined he up. He looked odd. Week. He looked odd and like human. He he was uh, Osprey was in like job interview clothes. He had like the. Jacket. Wait, wait, tell you, bro. I'm taking a flight from here all the way back to see my family and my kid, my old my lady, <laughs> wife, and my two fucking, uh, my two dogs and my two kids and my other two daughters, my stepson and my missus. Every fucking day he flies me out. Um, yeah, Shibata like, versus Osprey. Shibata versus Os- 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 Osprey. I didn't like how so. he was wearing uh, like civilian clothes. I like him in his track suits and his soccer shirts. I don't like him in like a jean jacket. What was up with his? He didn't hair? lose his bag this week. Yeah, he got his. He got, yeah, it's like no, like dude, maybe you should leave. Maybe you shouldn't dress yourself. You know, maybe you should wear your relaxed. Bro, bro, bro. He's so fucking um, cool. But yeah, I think the match quality has gone up not only because of like his personal matches, but his promos and what people people are watching him. And I think he's motivating the roster. I think Okada being there is motivating the roster. Um, I don't think Sasha is is motivating anybody. So I think but, she's angering them. She's angering Britt Baker. 
Sounds like it if these sheets are, uh, if you're saying that what that's what they said. So, yo, they should just, uh, what about Paige? Like, let's have Paige come out and like confront Sasha. Whoa! Oh! No way. I know. There, I, I think Paige is in a weird angle with, um, oh, with, uh, the other bimbo. <laughs> uh, Ruby Ride <Ryan laughs> is like dating bit. the guy. And like other people are trying to. Like, oh ruin. yeah, yeah. It's like the the, um, the no. She's trying to date someone, and she runs away with a knife or some shit. Harley no. Cameron, isn't no, she? Isn't no, it's the Harley Ruby Cameron Ryan angle? Is dating the one guy from the 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 Jericho Appreciation Society with the switchblade comb. They're okay. dating. They're going on dates, and like things are happening. And Soraya like doesn't want to hear about it. I thought she was with uh, Harley Cameron, remember? I think that's, yeah, it's, it's Soraya and Harley Cameron, and they don't like what's-his-name and Ruby Riot dating or something. It's awesome. Oh, uh, also, Rampage also had, so so the second I watched the other hour, of I watched Rampage this week. You might as well. You were in so deep at that point. Might as well just. Yeah, so that was whatever, and then <laughs> they had the. Women's match to close it. They, he has a hard a on for tag a, match. No, no, no. They had a women's street fight, just straight up. Hell yeah! This is and this is stemming from Mercedes Moan because it's Willow and Statlander versus Julia Hart and Sky Blue. Hell yeah! And Sasha and Mercedes Moan has something to do with all these people, you know. Oh yeah, she she first she met Statlander for the first time last night. Uh, Willow is the one who, you know, ended her journey, her put put her journey on pause, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then Julia Hart and Sky Blue are just coming in and taking the shitty finish. Well, they're Willow. evil. Yeah. So, Julia Hart, zero offense in this match until yeah. the finish. She was just taking bumps the whole time. Dope. I think they're also piping in. The audience, like now, she would sing, like to the ring, like she would try to get the the singing over, right? Like, do you remember? Do you remember this? She doesn't. I do feel it like I vaguely remember some type of you, odd yeah, singing. Well, you couldn't see shit because it's too fucking dark anyway. So, <laughs> so she would come out and she'd be singing the song, and then um, she stopped because it, she couldn't get it over, and then. She, um, I think they're just piping in the part they want sang. Like they're making it sound like the audience is singing it now. Just try to get the audience to do it. You know right. what I mean? So, um, no off. I think she might, I think we heard that she was injured or whatever. So she might still be injured. So she like, can't really, I mean, she can't really wrestle anyway. So it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> but like, you know, um, so whole match goes on. Sky Blue and Willow are the only ones really doing anything. Um, there was like a uh, code red on the announce table. Okay. But the table like didn't break. I don't know if it was intended to break, but it was a hard bump because it was Willow doing a flip. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and hitting that fucking hard table, like the, the announcer table. And it didn't break, um, you're saying? It didn't break. Wow. I don't know if it was supposed to break. But you make me want to watch this. I love me some Willow Nightingale. No, nah, she's been good. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of people like this match. I mean, I thought it was whatever, but I just thought it was funny. Julia, no offense, the whole match. And then the finish was just her. Like we're hearing reports whack. that the Canadian crowd was unhinged and, and just as advertised and that everybody sang edges song as well. Oh the- yeah. They sang edges song. No, they were they were um, they were lit all night. They go to Canada a lot, but not just not for Julia. You're saying. The, I mean, they, there could have been a chance that they did it, but they weren't singing. Why are they only singing the one part and not the other parts of the song? It's the hook, baby. All right. Any other AW news? What's Renee Paquette been up to? I mean, she Besides had her usual, probably like three, four appearances on the oh, show. Way but to go, Renee. Way to go. I think the Bucks are taking like more of her time. And there's been like more matches on the show, like In one Canada. more match. 
They're taking your time in canon. Well, she was she was at the beginning of the show. Like she was like, "What Toronto? Welcome to Rampage." And I I don't know. Oh, she is Canadian as well. Yeah, she is. Um, final question about AEW: Do you think that MJF returns at Dynasty? I could care less. I think maybe. Uh, I think I don't think they need him back. We'll just say that. Hmm. Not yeah, maybe not. Adam Cole story time worst segment on television though. Oh, he was on the show. He was on the show show. Well, no, he was um another vignette. Remember how he said he was sitting in like a weird story ominous... time with Adam Cole. Th- yeah, that's what it is. But now he's in a, he's in a nice suit, nice fitted suit. Right, right. But it, you but can't he's really so see the boot. Skinny and emaciated. So they, so they like must um, huge head. They, they must have uh, they must have watched our show and heard me, heard me say that. Yeah, that, that put on some nice clothes and the slick jacket and not show the boot. And not have the boot sticking out like a fucking sword. Well, he, gun. like, crossed his leg over the boot leg. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, but he's, like, so skinny and, like, weird looking. It looks like he's, like, sick. And uh, and that makes him look but like his head hasn't worked out in a very long time. I think that's what's going on. Like, he just doesn't work out, you know? And if he was taking supplements or was on the juice or whatever got him big you he know needs NXT. Juice. he needs the juice well i mean a lot of people don't i mean look at aj styles he's the juice dude, aj's to big bro they need to go dude, away dude, AJ for gets a few bigger cycles and bigger, you know bigger and bigger every fucking week when you're sitting at home you know when you're not on the when they remove you from the active roster page you, yeah, you can. You I don't can't wait get, to wake up tomorrow and skim the roster page. Yeah, see, because you, when you're not on the active roster page, that's the linchpin to not getting. You know, that's the loophole. If you're not on the roster page, they don't test you, so you can do a few cycles before they put you back on the roster page. Boom, we figured it out. Figured it out, Joe. All right, I guess that does it for AEW this week. I mean, WWE really. You watch SmackDown. I watched the final segment of SmackDown, or I watched the segment that we're going to argue about. So, um... Well, since my baby left me. <laughs> so, so you're saying you like this rock segment? I feel... Did I let's, like it? Let's go in order, first off. So, like, his music hits, right? Yeah. And then they have this weird transition into, like... His older theme? The old music, which is more like... Old Hollywood uh, rock theme. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I thought doom, the entrance doom. was fucking awesome. Why didn't they just go into that? Because it's Why just have... fucking cooler, Joe. Why do they have this like weird transition and, and the crowd's like... <laughs> like, you, you, the crowd, like, like died like, for a second and then like, came huh? back up? Because like, there's like a whole like reverse symbol. It's like... Yeah, it was like... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so dumb. whatever. No, so maybe awesome. he's just I think he's only going to come. Maybe he only comes out to this now. He is standing there looking awesome. And there's lightning behind him. And he's got the fucking. Yo, it's awesome. It's just fucking awesome. I love it so much. And, um, you know, he's almost like nice, too. He comes out. He's like, hey, guys. Hey, yeah. He's hey, just like, know. oh, I'm home. I'm home. Yeah. And he says, Why'd he start it like a baby face? He says like nice things at first. I don't know. But I think it was like an extreme overcorrection to like go home and smoke some crack. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely you know, an overcorrection. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Like, hey, uh, this is right here where I started, everybody. But yeah. Yo, uh. Yeah, instead of coming out being like scathing or just be any heel, let me let me just start you guys off like real nice and like don't worry, I'm a heel. Yeah, shut up, fatty. Like he doesn't, he it's like yo, rock. You can't call people fat or say that they have herpes. Like <laughs> you know, they say they smoke crack. Like this isn't this isn't 1998. You know, you can't call people fat or or say that they or like make fun of Mormon. You can't make fun of Mormons. You can't go to Utah and be like you and your 40 wives. You know, <laughs> you don't do that. You don't do I that did good. see what was the one uh, clip I saw of him. Was that from that long promo when he was like, "I gotta, I gotta take the belt and give it to my mommy. Give it to my mommy. Shut the fuck up." <laughs> did you see that one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's the fuck completely up. crazy. He goes online and drops <laughs> the f bomb. 
He's like unhinged yeah, rock. Unhinged it's rock. kind of funny. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, and like, and you know. He like, doesn't know which way to go. Yeah, though. yeah, that's he's, just, he's, he's like crazy. So fucking all over the he place. He told everybody, that he said he was going to smack the herpes off some guy's lips. He said, shut up, fatty. Told everyone to go home, smoke some crack. Now, this time he came out and he loved everybody. Um, but his entrance is more evil than ever. His entrance is like fucking Darth Vader coming to the ring. You know what I'm well, saying? Well, now he's saying I'm I'm the final, the final boss. boss, which is kind of dope. But it's true. It's it's burying Roman, and then yeah, Roman yeah, yeah. Roman it comes is. out with like a hoodie on. <laughs> <You know? laughs> he's just in his trainers and a hoodie. You know, and he's just yeah. like yeah. You know? Yeah, he just comes out in his. Uh, yeah, you thought Roman thousand, Reigns thousand dollar <laughs> Jordan breads or whatever. Yeah. Thought Roman Reigns was an overactor, but now The Rock comes and he's the final boss of overacting. It's all over the fucking place. The shows are all over. But yeah, the place. he's but he's absolutely unhinged and crazy. And I don't know why, but dude, when he turns, and it makes no sense. He's gonna be. He's gonna beat. Now he's got a weight. He's got his own weight belt. And oh, like, he's like, I'm gonna smack you. I'm gonna take this to to Mama to Reigns mama. I'm gonna, yeah. and Mama Rhodes. Or he, you don't even know what the fuck. Yeah, he's and he, he's gonna place. give. He's gonna he's gonna whip Cody in the butt with the belt until he bleeds. Then he's gonna hand it to Cody's mom, who has nothing to do. Did, didn't do anything. Very nice lady. Didn't do anything to anybody. You didn't like this promo though. I didn't really like it, but because I didn't like it, I, it was all over the goddamn yo, you place. You know what they should be doing, dude. And I hate to say it. We didn't even get to the worst part, which is um, the concert. Uh, I What they should be doing is they should replace Cody Rhodes's mom with Brandy Rhodes. And they should have The Rock antagonize Brandy Rhodes and write Brandy. Just at this point, just fucking do it. Just just take the training wheels off and let's reintegrate Brandy. Because Cody's been cringe. Cody's been reverting back to the AEW. You're little rock dick. You know, or whatever. Oh my god! But um, he said he said house. Like, look at this house. We never needed you. Look how big. Look at this house tonight. Does it seem like we needed the rock? Yeah. They, everyone, they love they love um using industry. There terms was definitely now. a company wide uh, email. There was like a, a an email, like a new a new uh, like, initiative. Use the terms? Yeah, use the term. Use the use the terms. House. Uh, our market uh, research shows that the marks love when you. Yeah, use, use like industry terms. terms. Yeah. So uh, the new company wide oh, mandate. But yeah, The Rock did a concert. He threw it back to the SmackDown Hotel days down at the end of Jabroni Drive. And he did a... He read off of an iPad. <laughs> Poorly You didn't like this. You didn't like this shit one bit. <laughs> uh, I, really, on, I really didn't. I like the way that like his look is fucking dope. And his yeah, there's good points. Like, we, I think we share the same opinion. We're like... This look is dope. Yeah, sure. He's gone back to the old music. When he starts getting a little like more heel about it, it's good. But then, like, why is he going too far here and not enough here? And then does He's this? Figuring it out. Sing- they're they're on the fly. Well, they're bro. getting pretty close. They're getting, <laughs> I yeah, mean, they're, getting, they're getting close. Yeah. Um, but the but song is was he leaving terrible. right after Mania? Is the question? Like, he might not. The the song was not good. It was not good. It maybe had like one clever part in it but it was so bad he might stick around till like backlash i'll tell you this backlash in puerto rico again or when he said his whole fucking long-winded thing about how he wants to hand the bloody belt to cody rhodes's mom oh it's in france this year he's probably sticking around not to interrupt you backlash 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 is in france backlash yeah so they so he might be sticking around for that. Go to France. I mean they might they might do Dude, one of these big uh, rain uh, global. He's a it's a global uh <laughs> it's a global uh yeah. I'll tell you this, Joe. He called Cody Rhodes's mom, Mrs. Rhodes, Mrs. Reigns. Talking about how for some reason he's gonna torment and torture Cody Rhodes's mom psychologically as he beats up his son, and then he looks to the camera and he goes, and then at the end, I'm going to whisper in your ear, what can I say except you're welcome? And for no reason, it makes no sense. It makes no, well, I, I, makes no crowd's sense. Like, but, he, well, but he sings the thing from Moana. Oh. And I don't know why, but it, that just, I love that. 
because yeah, it made no sense. It doesn't. Why are you? And no one, no one understood it. Fell, it fell. It was yo, flatter but, than piss on a platter. I was like, yo, look at him. He's just an evil. He might as movie well just start star. saying, "Let it go, let it go." <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. He thinks that his song is like on that level where he could sing yeah. one bar of it. Everyone's like, "Oh, the song! It's an Easter egg, brother." I loved it though. I loved it. He should start quoting Jumanji. I yeah, he should. He, he should bring Kevin Hart out. Oh yeah, yeah. No way. No way in hell. Do you think Stone Cold is going to stun The Rock at WrestleMania? I'd rather see a CM Punk get stunned. CM Punk is going to be involved with Drew. Yeah. I think we need to get CM Punk. Uh, I, th- I guess it would be silly to Punk and Austin kind of building to something um, in between uh, Drew also doing his thing. But I, I think if everyone's healthy, they need to do that for next mania. Something. Stone Cold and CM Punk. Yeah, I think th- I think some a, a, a promo battle, some I don't know anything. Hmm. But he's gonna want his um finish the story. He's gonna have to finish his story too. <laughs> All right, so Weber's Raw this week in Raleigh, North Carolina. Six uh, twelve thousand tickets over twelve thousand tickets. Look at the house, you. brother. Look at this house, brother. Uh, show started off apparently with a good. I I really didn't see all of this show. I only saw the last hour, which was dreadful. DIY defeating uh the Creed Brothers. Yeah, couldn't care less. Uh, but DIY. This the, like, oh, this is for the. Oh, this was for the um to get into the six pack challenge. Yeah, it's a six pack six tag team ladder match. Uh, and DIY, I guess, you know, it was a really big deal to them because they worked so hard, Joe. Yeah. So they were crying and pointing at the sign and really amped up. But, you know, I understood why they were, but I didn't really care. And they don't really do it for me. Mm-hmm. But, hey, good for them. Um, WrestleMania moment, baby. Whatever. Um, Candice LeRae, Andy Hartwell defeat Katana Chance and Kata Carter. It's only a two-minute match. Yep. Ricochet defeats Dom Mysterio. I'm sure What's Her Nuts was uh, ooing and mm-hmm. on her chair. <sighs> I'll tell you what the best part of this show is. Uh, Pat McAfee and Michael Cole is by far the best part of Monday Night Raw is Pat McAfee. They did more of the thing, I noticed. The Telestrator or whatever the fuck? They did the Telestrator in um, in the uh, New Day Alpha Academy match. They had Otis was like looking Get in my belly. <laughs> <laughs> Pat McAfee they said, had like Get his eyes belly. like going yeah. one way, like his like. Vision was this way, but then this was here. It's like, look at this, Cole. Look, his, 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 his. I I love him. I know he's a little douchey, but uh, he's very entertaining. Oh, he's fine. They, uh, Michael Cole goes, oh, look how quick Ricochet is. He's like a puma. And then Pat McAfee just very dryly goes, like, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't think uh, like people don't really talk about. People should be talking more about how quick pumas are. <laughs> like something like that. It's like, <laughs> it's very very funny, like yeah, dry and witty response and it like broke cole cole corpsing on commentary yeah yeah they released like send, the send for the, the man they released the footage today of cole like like on the air during the broadcast he was just silent but they released the footage of it like he's like dying laughing with his head in his hands because yeah pat pat so matter of factly said like yeah i don't think enough people are talking about how quick pumas are you know somewhere in this show was a cody promo oh God. um did you see this yo he is uh He's in the home stretch, and he is swinging and missing, in my opinion. The last three Cody promos have been annoying at best. Yeah, what is going on? I don't know. I don't know. They're entering. I, they're two weeks out from Mina, and it seems like they're kind of like already uh, pumping the brakes, or at least, I don't know, they're kind of like tanks on empty Well, he cried during the Michael Cole thing, which was very weird. And then I guess, too. You know, he wore the baby blue suit and cried. And then to counteract that, he wore the black gangster suit this week and came out and said things like asshole and dick. You're an asshole. I don't think you're a heel. Yeah. I think you're an asshole. Oh, my God. He said the A, a word. Uh, yeah. And then he said, he's like, oh, something, something, big 
Big Dwayne energy, or do you suffering from LDS, Little Dick Syndrome? Not good. I nah, think what's happening is that they're trusting him more, and he's trusting himself more. So he's let it, so more of his bad ideas are seeping into what they got for him. That's what mm-hmm. I think is happening. Because this is what happened in AEW. Full yeah. creative control, like tell your story, for lack of a better term. And he it's made just it him all trying convoluted. To get that pedestal. Right, it all convoluted. Everything he says secretly like puts him in a in a pl- place. Or no, or excuse me. It's a pet. It's a, it's a, not a pedestal. It's a stepping stone to do acting. Right. So if I act a lot now, it's like, oh, maybe when I'll have this run, I'll finish the story. Maybe I'll be a champ for a few months. Give the belt, and oh, the now Marine. I can go to Hollywood. Well, and and you remember and when, then come back. You remember when uh, right, and then come back again and again, and then well, you remember when um, he would talk in AEW about how he workshopped his promos. And I like Cornette fucking buried him. He's like, oh, he's workshopping his promo. He's in a group text working on his promos. Like, yeah. and I think that that's what we're getting right now from him. It's how do you say it? It's compressed. Like his shit is so fake. Like there's no real guitar tone there. You know what I mean? It's like there's too many effects. Yeah, like yeah. You, you know what I mean? It's just overdone, overacted, and um, yeah, I think they trust him more. I think they're about to give him the ball, probably. And so I think that he has more freedom. And in turn, his bad ideas are seeping into the thing. Like the crying. Like the like this edgy one was even fucking worse than the crying. Once again, another massive overcorrection. So I, I'm a huge fan of Cody. But yeah, they really are fucking this up. And The Rock's dope. But The Rock should not be involved in this. Like, like they um they're kind of turning people away. I noticed um the aftermarket for tickets for Mania have been dropping. They were going up steadily. There was an uptick until about last week or about two weeks ago. It kind of with fees it stopped about four hundred again in the building, and now it's going down. And so was my interest recently because kind of was getting there, but then you know, it's kind of getting lame now. Yeah, uh, it's, these rock it's promos so are fucking dead. These Cody promos are dead. Roman's like nowhere to be found. Bookings us all over the place. I mean, that's what we're used to. But we, at least we had this. You know, look how hot it looked when when Rock slapped Cody at that Vegas uh, Super Bowl weekend. Like that that week, that whole week, Super Bowl week. The weekend after the week after that, and maybe the week after that was like the hottest this whole road has been. Yeah, yeah. And then now it's just tailing off. Well, it's, and once again, it's it's artificially, you know, like you look online and you see the Rock's <laughs> intro, you know, or whatever, or you see like a clip and it it, it looks popping. It's like, oh man, they're hot. Oh man, but like in reality, if you watch the whole thing, it's really not. It's dragging. Maybe he it's, shouldn't it's, have went out and. Uh... They, sh- they they probably shouldn't have allowed... Yeah, there's just too much freedom to The Rock, too much freedom to Cody. They're both taking shots at each other that are kind of like fucking up the product and the build. Like, oh, you, you put out a, a a video and then you take it down a few minutes later and right. then it was, that there's was a director's too real. cut. Yeah, yeah, that was too, re- that yeah, was too, too real. real. They buried it's him too, too hard. They buried him they buried so him too hard. hard and you bury the whole match and you bury the, the Fed. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and like... It's it's kind of the same thing with the Young Bucks thing, too, because it's like, The Rock, uh, I'm your boss. He literally said to the guy, I'm your boss. I'm going to make the title disappear, and I'm going to this, and I'm going to that. And it's like, well, don't you, either, you, either you're the boss and you're going to, or you're not. So, like, why are you saying that? It's like, it makes yeah. no sense. You, you, know what, you know what I mean? And, like, I don't know. It, like, I, I trust them. I've, I want to trust them. I, I don't trust The Rock. You know who I trust? I trust Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman. Yo, when you think about think about the slap, how fucking hot was this shit last year with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn and, like, them trying to win each other's friendship and the fucking bloodline and, and Sami at, at elimination and all this shit. And then, Co- yo. They that didn't have was- a, uh, a scandal going on. They didn't have The Rock and his ego. They didn't have... Uh, CM Punk and his injury. They didn't have 
Seth and his injury, like they, I think a lot of this shit got messed up, and then they're kind of just like, all right, Rock, you just do your thing, it's fine. And Cody, you just do your thing, it's fine. And it's not going to make a lot of sense because the show's already sold out, so who cares anyway? And just right. let's just get We're through this for the mania, the and then we'll kind of yeah. just like reset by like backlash. We'll get through there, and then the summer we're kind of just going to coast with Punk and 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 Drew. And then maybe by, like, fall, we'll slowly start to get this back together. Again. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you're right. I mean, I was, can't just reset it on a dime like that. I was really hot last year for Sami Zayn and KO and that night one tag match. I am very cold for this night one. T- it, you know, Seth's wrestling twice, which in a way buries Drew, too. Like, Drew's doing great right now. But instead of like winning, but the him cha- wrestling twice, he's not at one hundred percent. Right, right. coming off an injury. Yeah, right. So it hurts Drew. Yeah, so that's all fucked up. And Drew's still like calling out CM Punk, and R- Rollins is involved in both things. And now Cody's wrestling twice with the fucking tag team thing. Yo, and and I I am very curious if they're gonna botch night two. Like, I think at this point they should just have Roman go over. Yo, that'd be awesome. Just because everyone would be <laughs> so mad. But, okay, but if it's bloodline rules, then Cody's got to win. Now let it just yeah, be I mean, bloodline rules and fucking. I was saying that I was saying last night that it shouldn't be a no DQ match. That's tribal combat. Bloodline rules bl- is every member of the family comes out. It's a bloodline lumberjack match. So you get Rikishi out there. You get fucking, you know, Alpha, Alpha Junior, Alpha Senior. You get, uh, who's the guy at MLW who's awesome? Jacob Fatu, Jacob Fatu. comes out. Uh, oh, and you know what happens? Night one, the brothers fight, but earn each other's respect. Rikishi comes out, group hug. They all do the two cool dance together. And then the next night, for Bloodline Rules, unified Usos with Rikishi come out. As the lumberjacks, and at that point you can't have Cody beat the whole family. Cody loses because well, Rikishi gives um, him the stink face. Look at it this way: I what was I thinking about the other day that they it doesn't matter. Oh, fuck, I'm drawing a blank. Like it was like they had they had Cody win last year. He was healthy. He came back. And then they just had him lose. What was the thought process to have him lose and then just go like he's no more hot than he was last year at this time than he is like now to last year. You know what I mean? There's no difference. Well, okay, Uh, I think he is. I think just his reactions like I think he is. I think he's grown in the year. But at the very least, I don't think he's any less hot than he was last year. But I I just don't think it's like. Like, I, I think if like. Roman just wins, then it's just like, we'll just finish the story next year, and then we'll just like get in this thing. <laughs> right, Cody will have to like beat The Rock or something, you know. Yeah, like it just becomes know, or, a meme. or win the three straight Royal Rumbles in a row, and it'll be like the winner of the 2022 or 2023, 2024, 2024 <laughs> Royal Men's Royal Rumble match. Um. Yeah. Did you see what Dolph Ziggler said on Busted Open about Cody's story? He was no. like, oh, uh, he's like, oh, what's your story? That your dad was one of the most famous wrestlers ever and you want to win the title that he never won? It's like, oh, because what, you had to like persevere? Like what, what wrestler doesn't have a story? Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And most of their dads weren't Dusty Rhodes. You know, so it's like, oh, yeah, oh, wow. Like you had Who every, said that? Do, Austin? Uh, Do, Dolph Ziggler fucking buried, I'm busted open. Uh, buried him. It was awesome. It was that's awesome. Funny. And he's like, oh, yeah, like, he's like, how many wrestlers, like, slept in their cars or did whatever and, like, didn't have Dusty Rhodes as their dad? You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, damn, like, you're right, dude. You're so right. And it's like, oh, what? You just, like, like nobody cared. Like Dusty didn't care about the title. Like like he didn't win the title. Like and you just one day decided that you have to win it. Like yeah. that's not that's not for your dad. That's just you decided that you have to win the title. 
Because your dad it might not happen still, bro. Because they can do this thing at Backlash. They can do this thing at SummerSlam. They could do this thing at the at the whatever this MSG show is. Well, fucking, I feel like I to make it because that's where he Dusty won it at at the Garden. It's like daddy, my daddy won it at the Garden. Like, and they oh, took the belt away. Whose wrestlers' dads even had a chance to wrestle for the belt? Like that's your birthright? Is that? <laughs> but anyway, I I have a thought. I think I have a thought. You know how we're talking about how Cody is kind of morphing into AEW Cody? Like he's kind of working against his own yeah self so you remember one of cody's no doubtedly cody's idea was that he if he loses this match he can never challenge for the title you remember that was his thing he can never challenge for the AEW championship and so i think that that was his idea and i think that that's still his idea so i think it's in his head that he wants to tell this ultimate Jesus baby face, I'm going to be chasing it for years type of thing. And I think he tried to do that in AEW where it was like, never challenged for the title. And in his mind, obviously, eventually he'll get a shot. One more shot. You know, so I feel like that's kind of already in his brain creatively that he wants to like, not, he wants to not win it. He wants to always not win it. And, and So he challenges always for it, but never wins it. And so you think about what The Rock said, where it's like, if you lose this one, you will never get another title opportunity, which was the exact same storyline that he was doing in AEW, where like if he loses the match, he'll never be able to challenge for the title again. And, you know, because AEW is like all over the place and Cody wound up leaving, you never got a resolution to that. But I'm sure in his head there was one, some kind of twist or yeah, turn. And it didn't work out, yeah. Right. So I could see him pitching that now to them and be like oh and you know what how about this guys and you know and he'll do it so that 10 years from now at a con he can be like oh, you know not a lot of people know this but i said how about this i lose again and he'll like take credit you know you know what i mean like it just i mean yeah seems that's what I'm saying, that man. Way. like i think as the days go by like i i'm i'm convinced myself more and more that roman just might win now so. well and it's like it's like jericho losing the hook like, Cody's not doing it because it's the right choice. This is Cody's, like, fucking babyface fantasy. You know, he lo he loses again because in the end he thinks it makes him look more sympathetic. Like, you know? Yeah. And I could see it be like The Rock is now going to... Now The Rock's in his way. And for six months he challenges The Rock. And it comes down to a match where it's like, if he wins the match, he can, like... Enter the Royal Rumble, but he's got to do it at number one, or you know, some, you know. Yeah, yeah. I can see them extending the the mountain climb. Yeah, and man. Speaking I, of mountain, because like, <laughs> go ahead. Go, no, oh, no. <laughs> you're gonna mention Darby? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, though. What were you gonna say? No, no, me? that that point was better than whatever I was gonna say. So, uh, yeah. Speaking of mountain climb, rest in peace, Darby, who injured his foot, and is postponing. <laughs> It's Everest climb. He's postponing the Mount Everest climb. Now that was he's dedicated gonna... to Gigi Dolan. Yeah, now he, yeah, he... <laughs> he always swore that he would carve their initials in the top of Mount Everest. So now he's going to postpone his climb to Mount Everest, and now he's going to be a guy who broke his foot who climbed Mount Everest, which I would love to see the statistics on that. I'd love to see the percentage of people who climb Mount Everest and how many of those people broke their foot like four bones in their foot in their lives. How many of them broke their four bones in the foot uh, sub one week to the climb? <laughs> well, no, he's not. He's not postponing. He's like, he's going to heal. But I'm just saying, like, his foot. Yeah, but he, he can't go for a few months. What do you think about Raquel Rodriguez, who, who succumbed to Australian cabin pressure? You think that a fucking surgically repaired, healed foot that was mangled is going to do well at high altitudes in the, in a, in a boot in the middle of the snow on mount yeah. everest even if it's healed like year you know even if it's a year from you'd now. have to um chew your foot off probably at some point <laughs> gangrene he should just amputate it now get ready for everest yeah yeah just go in but uh um, there didn't seem to be nothing else really notable on raw there was a really bad last woman standing match with becky and nia Jax. oh you didn't like it you didn't like that <laughs> 
my girlfriend was like, um, what's up with that fire extinguisher over there? Are they going to use that? I was like, yeah, sometimes they do. I don't know. And then she starts using it. She's like, oh, I told you. I told you. I told you. It was too much in the frame, and I knew it. I'm like, She so, right. was so obviously there. Like, yeah, yeah but I'm like, all right, cool. Like, at least you kind of noticed the details like that. Yeah. Yeah, I bet, you know, that bright red. But how many fire cart- extinguisher spots have I fucking seen? I don't fucking care. Like, <laughs> I, I, you know, I have a feeling that bright red cartoon fire extinguisher over there is going to. Yeah, it's like in a video over. game where it's like all yeah, pre-rendered rendered. backgrounds and then it's like a fucker just sticking out like or the camera angle where it's like, oh, like, oh, shit. OK. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I think I don't I see interact- this. I'm an idiot. Yeah, that's an interactable. Yeah. I- item. Key item. Um, But yeah, that does it for. And and they ended the show with just Rhea and Rhea came out. Yeah. And Rhea and Becky were just like cringily talking shit to each other. That was love it. Rhea. Live live for you, Rhea. Can't wait to see that, you. That ma- that match has no no appeal to me either. All right. I gotta pee. You wanna wrap this up? Yeah. Um but yeah, that pretty much does it for us, I guess. Um you can find me at Tell us about your streaming. If you want to unfollow Joe, give give. If you want to unfollow and unsubscribe to my channel, it's the Jedi Joe. (laughs) If you want to unsubscribe to my Instagram, it's at the real Jedi Joe. Nice. Way to go. Um, When do you stream? I'll be streaming tomorrow. I stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday around like 8-ish, 9-ish. Yeah, so check out my Discord for updates. Check out Joe's Discord. Join our Discord as well. Put the and then Discord. join the Bullies Discord. I'm in there yeah, too. I'm getting back to it. I forwarded your Discord messages into our Discord messages. I don't know how I did it, but I did it. Maybe, maybe I can just maybe we can have uh, make a a channel in your Discord that's like the going live Lame-aholics. channel. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. And then we can like just both of us post into that. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. You know, so like this show will be in there, all your Twitch stuff, all your YouTube stuff, and then all my Twitch YouTube stuff, and then hell yeah. Well, I am going to be streaming uh, briefly later on. There's a new oh, yeah. game on PlayStation Plus. Not Saifu. Ari too. Sifu, Sifu. What's it like called? A, it's oh, like a, that? it's like a fucking samurai game. Oh. Sefo, Sefo, Sifu. Sifu. It's new this month, and uh, it was on my radar a while back, but I didn't buy it when it was 40 bucks, and I was patient, and it's now free. So follow on Twitch, follow Jedi Joe, tune into Boulevard Bullies next week, right here at 8 p.m. For Here Comes the Lame, out of time. Bye-bye!